NBC Sports presents Game 5 of the 1982 American League Championship Series. From County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the California Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers. Game 4 played on a day of rain. But the Milwaukee Brewers right-hander Moose Hawes pitched brilliantly in a game delayed almost two hours by rain and interrupted twice. And then Mark Bruhard stepped out of the shadows, hit a two-run home run to lock a 9-5 win for Milwaukee and even the series at 2-2. And today in Game 5, Harvey Keene and Gene Mock will manage their teams for the American League pennant of 1982. And as we come to this final game, the fifth game in this championship series, live from County Stadium in Milwaukee, let's bring you up to date, recapping what has happened in the first two games. They opened in Anaheim, and the Angels won both, 8-3 and 4-2. Moving to Milwaukee, the Brewers responded, winning 5-3 and 9-5. And thus we go to this fifth game, with all the money, marbles, and chalk in plain view on the table. I'm Keith Jackson. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's endurance grind, not only for us, but for the ball players. But all of them have come seemingly fresh to the ballpark and ready to put it all out there today for what could be and will be the final game for one team and a ticket to the World Series for the other. The starting pitchers, a rematch from game two. Bruce Keeson won it 4-2. He starts for California, right-hander. The losing pitcher in game two, Pete Vukovic, he will start for Milwaukee. And both of them express confidence, and both say they feel all right, despite some minor injuries. The National League playoffs will be seen at 8 tonight, Eastern Time, here on ABC. Last night, they played game two at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And right now, let's join Jim Lampley for a report on game two. The weather finally cooperated in Bush Stadium, allowing the Cardinals and the Braves to play Game 2 of the National League Championship Series. Atlanta starting ace knuckleballer Phil Necro with only two days rest, a decision that cost the Braves a run in the first inning when one of the flutter balls got away from Bruce Benedict, allowing Ken Oberkfeld to score from third base, 1-0 St. Louis. The Braves regained the lead in the third inning off rookie pitcher John Stuper. Rafael Ramirez single home Benedict from second base, and when another rookie, Willie McGee, let the ball get by him in center field, Ramirez has scooted all the way around to score, Atlanta taking a 2-1 lead. Atlanta still led 3-2 in the eighth inning with bullpen ace Gene Garber on to protect the lead. But Willie McGee chopped the ball high off the carpet. Ramirez had time to make a tag on George Hendrick, but no time to get Darrell Porter from third base, and it was 3-3 after eight. St. Louis rallied again in the ninth after David Green's single and Tommy Hur's sacrifice bunt. Ken Oberkfell hit this fly ball over the head of Brett Butler in center field. It was Oberkfell's seventh career hit in 11 at bats against Garber. Green scored easily with the winning run. 4-3 Cardinals. They lead the series two games to none. The series moves to Atlanta for game three tonight, and a St. Louis victory would mean the World Series for the Cardinals for the first time in 14 years. The weather today in Milwaukee, it has been dry so far. However, there are threatening skies on the horizon. We'll talk with Earl Weaver, Jim Palmer in a moment. Now Earl Weaver and Jim Palmer. And gentlemen, Skipper, a week ago, you, on this very hour, preparing for a very big ball game for your Baltimore Orioles. I'm sure that the tension and the moment that you went through a week ago is similar to what Gene Mock and Harvey Keene are going through right now. I'm sure it's about the same. You uh, try to avoid the word pressure or tension in the dugouts, but uh, I never mind ad admitting to people that I was nervous, and I really didn't get a lot of sleep last weekend. I talked to Gene Mock this morning, and he said he got six good hours, and it reminded me of last Saturday after we had won our ball game and were uh, going to come back the next day. I went home, and I fell asleep about 10 o'clock, and I, I got six good hours sleep, but I was up at four, and there was no way I could get the thoughts of the game out of my mind, and I was up from four o'clock on I waited for this for the daylight to come and I got out to the ballpark as early as I can because when you get out there there's things to do that will take your mind off of it well Jim Palmer a week ago this hour you were preparing to go out and pitch that big ball game for Baltimore what about the fellows Vukovic and Keeson what must they be going through now well I'm sure that they're uh 
feeling the uh, nervousness that goes along with every start you ever have. Um, I think maybe the only game I don't get nervous for is a game in spring training. They don't really mean a lot other than getting in shape. But uh, whether you're pitching in Cleveland or you're pitching a playoff game like today, you just don't know what's going to happen. So you go out there hoping that you have your good stuff. If you have any kind of injuries, and uh, Keeson, of course, has a blister on his middle finger that might affect him, and Vukovic has had a tired, uh, sore arm that's required a couple of quarter zone shots, you're wondering how you're going to be throwing. And uh, the key to this series has been the pitching performances. In the first two games for the Angels, Keeson and John pitched very well, and they won. In the last two games, Sutton and uh, Moose Haas have pitched very well for the Brewers, and they won. So they know that their job is to stay away from the beginning, uh, go out there and do the best they can, and hopefully they'll be on today. And you just never know when you go out and take up your warm-up pitches how you're going to pitch once you get in the ballgame. There is a question for the Milwaukee Brewers. There is a prime worry for the Milwaukee Brewers because the man who shared the home run championship with Reggie Jackson, 39, Gorman Thomas, is hurt. Hurt his knee yesterday. Earlier I talked to him. Gorman, how bad is the knee? Uh, I got about 20 minutes sleep last night. Uh, it really locked up on me pretty good. And uh, I was a one-legged man coming to the ballpark this morning, but I've had a lot of treatment on it. and. I'm going to try to play, and uh, we'll see what happens. How did it happen? Uh, the plate to play yesterday, uh, I was indecisive. Uh, I thought the ball would beat me there a little sooner than it did, and then I saw the ball short hop boon. So I changed my thinking. Rather than trying to bury him, I was going to try to beat the tag. And as a result, I ended up sliding uh, half on my knees, half on my shins, and half on his mask, half on his batting helmet, and everything else. So. Uh, it hurt like the devil, but uh, today's another day, and we'll see what happens. You got too much bulldog in you. I can't imagine not having you out there in center field and not having your bat in the lineup. Well, my bat's been kind of silent. There's no question about that. Uh, I really don't have any alibis for it. I got a phone call this morning from Mike Schmidt, and uh, we talked things over for a bit, and uh, we're going to try his philosophy today. And uh, uh, we've come back from the dead. We're still in the corner, but uh, that's how we play the best, and uh, I'm looking for big things from us today. Can you tell me what you and Mike discussed? No, because I talked to Weaver in California, and I think I got one head out there. But uh, what it really boiled down to was uh, to be a little more aggressive and uh, uh, try not to get in a situation where you have to hit with two strikes all the time. Good luck, Gorm. Thanks, Thank you. What was it uh, you told him? Well, today I told him, uh, let the outside pitch alone. But if he thinks that I gave uh, his book away to the California Angels, he's wrong. I wouldn't tell anybody down there how to pitch anyone. I think every superstition known to man in baseball is probably respected today, and every good luck omen has been polished. Now with County Stadium in Milwaukee filled for this final game of the 1982 American League season, let's join... The public address announcer Bob Betts for the introduction of the players. Now here are the starting lineups for today's game between your Milwaukee Brewers and the California Angels. First the starting lineup for the Western Division champion California Angels. Manager Gene Mock. Leading off and playing left field, number five, Brian Downing. Downing. Downing second and playing first base, number 29, Rod Carew. Carew. Batting third and playing right field, number 44, Reggie Jackson. Jackson. Batting fourth and playing center field, number 19, Fred Lynn. Lynn. Fred Lynn, who roams center field so well, who swings the bat so well when the pressure is on. Remember this rainbow home run from game one. He's the hottest hitter in this series. Batting fifth and designated hitter, number 25, Don Baylor. Baylor. And Don Baylor, the designated hitter who has set a new league championship series mark with 10 runs batted in, including this grand slam home run yesterday. Batting sixth and playing third base, number 11, Doug DeSensei. DeSensei. Batting seventh and playing second base, number four, Bobby Gritch. Gritch. 
time flying shortstop, number 10, Tim Foley. Bruce Keeson. Keeson. And now the remainder of the California Angels. And now the starting lineup for your Eastern Division champion, Milwaukee Brewers. And playing third base, number four, Paul Molitor. Molitor. Paul Molitor, who leads off for the Milwaukee Brewers and is so productive in the leadoff spot, has hit a two-run home run in this series in game three, in the running for the MVP. Batting second and playing shortstop, number 19, Robin Yelp. And playing first base, number 15, Cecil Cooper. Cooper. Batting fourth and catching, number 23, Ted Simmons. Simmons. Batting fifth and playing left field, number 24, Ben Ogilvy. Ogilvy. Batting sixth and playing center field, number 20, Corbin. by a sore knee, but in game number one, flashed his power with this long home run off Tommy John. Remember, he hit 39 in the regular season. Batting seventh and designated hitter, number seven, Don Money. Money. Batting eighth and playing right field, number 22, Charlie. And playing second base, number 17, Jim Gettner. Gettner. Pitching for the Brewers and in the bullpen, number 50, Pete Vukovic. Vukovic. And now the remainder of the Eastern Division champion, Milwaukee Brewers. It isn't too hard to figure out where you are listening to that crowd, is it? They're up in Milwaukee for Game 5. The 1982 American League Championship Series from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The California Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers in the showdown game for the American League pennant. Brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to take charge of a new Chevrolet car or truck at your Chevrolet dealers now. And by light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Now we're ready for the ceremonial first pitch of this ball game. Ken Keltner, third baseman for Cleveland. We'll be throwing it out. Remember, Kenny? He's the man who made two diving, scratching stops in a ball game to snap Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak back in 1941. Ed Simmons gives him back the baseball to take home with him, and we are ready to play baseball in this championship game. Milwaukee Brewers defense we have Cecil Cooper at first base, Jim Gantner at second, Robin Yount at short, Paul Molitor at third. In the outer perimeter, it's been Ogilvy back in left field with some bruised ribs. In center field, it is Borman Thomas, a fine defensive center fielder. He is hobbled. His knee is very sore. He may not be able to play the whole ball game. We'll have to see. In right field, it is Charlie Moore back in the plate, Ted Simmons. And the pitcher, Pete Vukovic. Well, Pete, 18 and 6 on the year. He was 3 and 0 until 
last Wednesday night against the Angels this year and he's basically a sinker ball pitcher has a fork ball and a slider and uh, he's a type of the guy that does not get in front of the hitters very often uh, and the other night he got hurt on a lot of belt high pitches we're just going to have to see this is his, his second start this season with only three days rest uh, in his other start one seven innings gave up ten hits and ended up losing three to two. The first pitch of the ball came to Brian Downing. He's outside for ball one. The only comment I would make about Pete Bukovic, uh, Jim Palmer, is he is a competitor. Well, there's no doubt about it. He's been uh, 32 and 10 for the Brewers over the last two years. Had some good years with the Cardinals in St. Louis after coming over from Toronto, and uh, he battles you. Moves the ball around. His theory on pitching is very simple. He doesn't want to throw any two pitches in a row to any hitter the same speed. So you'll see a lot of off-speed sliders, hard sliders, and uh, the sinking fastball. Which is uh, that pitch you saw right there. The count now on Brian Downing. One ball and two strikes. So yesterday's ball game, Downing chasing a foul ball. Ran into the tarp roller, which lies against the wall down the left field line. He banged his right knee. It is swollen. It is sore. It is wrapped. That's all he had to say about it, and that shot down the right side is going to drop in the corner and go to the wall. Downing turns first base. He's going for two, and he'll make it standing. Downing leads off with a double. A manager is anxious to see what his pitcher is going to show him in the first inning because a lot of times it's going to dictate the type of ball game that you're going to manage. And here you see it's a pretty good pitch, uh, outer half, down. Browning uh, Brian Downey who's hit very well 281 on the year can hit the ball to left as well as right field uh, goes right down the right field line and uh, the ball blows away from Charlie Moore who makes a nice play hold him to a double. So the Angels leadoff man is on second base and the batter is Rod Peru with Molitor stepping in on the grass at third to take away as much of the bunt as possible. Let's see if Gene Mark tries to move him up. Pitch is high and away for ball one. Earl, what do you think? Earl Weaver, would you move him over? Try to get that run on the board? I myself would let Rodney hit here. Uh, try to. I'd let him try to pull the ball if I could. Uh, I think they'll be going for some big runs because you don't know what your pitcher's uh, actually going to have during the ball game, and you don't know if one run will make it or you need more. Well, it didn't work because Ben Ogilvy, drifting to the line, makes the catch in left field, and Downing is not able to move over. They still have two big men coming up in Reggie Jackson and Fred Lynn, so uh, they've got a shot. Well, they've got a shot, but I hate to argue this early into the game, but boy, I'll tell you what, if if I'm the California pitcher, I'd like to see that one run on the board, and if they can, of course, I know your theory is to put two or three runs up there, but it's nice to get that early lead. I think you'd like two or three better than one. Jackson stands in Reggie two for 15 one home run and Vukovic is high to him for ball one the wind blowing toward left a fly ball hit down the left field line is going to get a lot of help right field you're going to have to hit it they were uh, flying out of here pretty good in batting practice again but these are the type of hitters that can uh, make the ball get out in a hurry I talked to Reggie uh, during batting practice and I said this is your kind of day and it Reg and he said well it's supposed to be so we'll have to wait and see what he does. Look at it starts him outside then goes inside and he's behind two balls and no strikes and this is similar to the situation when he hit the home runoff Pete the other night he got behind in the count threw him a high fastball. I think one of the reasons Reggie's had so much difficulty in this series the two for 15 as you said he struck out six times and five of those times they've gotten ahead with either the count 0 and 2 or 1 and 2 so they've been getting ahead of him and uh, he hasn't been hitting the pitches they've been giving him to hit. Shoots it right to the third baseman Molitor goes to second hits the base runner the ball rolls out into the outfield and it was a bad play by Paul he should not have thrown the ball that way because Gantner was nowhere near the bag there was no one to throw it to but Molitor who's learning to play third base just reflexively trying for the double play. Those are the type of things that happen in uh, the big ball game. You're right Keith he had no chance the ball hit the runner in the back and now he's at third base where he can score on a pass ball or uh, an infield air. Molitor will get an error on advancing Brian Downing over to third and the batter now is Fred Lynn. Here's another look at the play as you see the ball rolling out Jimmy Gantner getting back to it as quickly as possible. But Downing moved quickly over to third. 
And he edges off the bag as Fred Lynn steps in. You can see he is 8 for 14 in the championship series this year. Well, Freddie's swinging the bat awfully well. He hit a curveball in L.A. for a home run yesterday, the curveball to break up a no-hitter. And I'd be very careful with him here. The, un the only problem, of course, is that you have Don Baylor, who has 10 RBIs in the series, right behind him. And that's, that's what makes it so tough to pitch against both of these lineups. If you pitch around one guy, and again, Freddie Lynn with eight hits, you have Don Baylor to answer for. And uh, if you look out there, if you're on the mound, you're looking at that wind. Not too good a win for the pitchers today. Vukovic moving the ball around against Lynn has missed the strike zone now and he's behind three balls and no strike. And I think he'll get the green light here if it's a pitch that he can hit. Breaking pitch, changing speed on it a little bit, into a strike. Three and one. He changed speeds on three and oh, so he was thinking right along with us up here. Well, this goes out to the game back in Wednesday night. Did Gene Mock let a couple hitters swing away three and oh and that's a base hit down the line. Left field scores downing from third. Ogilvy bobbles the ball, and Lynn keeps right on hustling to second base. Angels break on top, one to nothing. Well, anybody can say they're not nervous if they want to, but I'll tell you one thing. In a ball game like this, you almost have to be. Here you see Freddie Lynn just going with the pitch. Bukovic got on a fastball away and he just poked it to left field. And when Freddie Lynn's hot, I've seen him do that many times. The Milwaukee Brewers have committed two errors here in the top of the first inning. Ogilvy charged with an error in allowing Lynn to go to second base. And Bukovic gets a strike on his first pitch to Big Don Baylor. Ten RBIs for the Big Texan. It is low. Lynn on second base with a single to left to knock in a run and then move to second when Ogilvy bobbled the ball. You would think that Lynn and Baylor are both probables in the MVP voting, too. Beats it foul, bounces up in the air. It's a fair ball. It's a fair ball, and Simmons throws him out. Don looked at it and then realized it was that far out in front of him. It probably was going to be fair. It took off Simmons, caught it on the first hop, and threw him out. But California exercising opportunity as the Brewers commit two errors. They had a double and they had a single, and they take the lead in the top of the first inning, one to nothing. For the Milwaukee Brewers, it'll be Molitor, Yount, and Cooper to lead off the bottom of the first. Bottom of the ninth, tie score. One on, one out. One hit, and it's two straight for St. Louis. One more to clinch tonight on ABC. The defense for California, as we have seen it before, Rod Carew at first base with Bobby Gritch at second base, and the shortstop is Tim Foley. At third base, Doug DeSensei. Those are not quite as sore after having broken it. On Friday, Brian Downing will be in left field. And we'll see how mobile he is out there with a sore knee. Freddie Lynn in center. And over in right field, it is Reggie Jackson. Behind the plate, Bob Boone will do the catching. And on the mound, Bruce Keeson warming up. Well, Bruce Keeson, what a marvelous game he pitched on Wednesday. Nine innings, five hits, no walks, two earned runs. One of them may have been averted by the fact that Freddie Lynn dove for a ball and the ball went for the inside the park home run. Eight strikeouts. Again, uh, doing something today that he's kind of unfamiliar with, which is pitching on three days rest, even though lifetime, and he has not done it since 1979, lifetime, he's 10 and 1 with an earned run average under two and a half runs a game pitching with three days rest. Uh, and I think uh, the only reason it's that high, the earned run average, is the fact that he gave up seven runs in one of those ball games. I think he's only lost. So. I think the big question today is number one will he be able to pitch as well as he did the other night where he had great command of his pitches got his breaking ball over when he needed to he threw his fastball as Earl Weaver said up and away and also in on some of the hitters and uh, I think the toughest thing about Bruce Keeson and, and Bob Boone has said this he gives you so many different angles because he throws three quarters and then he also drops down and throws sidearm and uh, the hitters have a lot of uh, different areas to look from where the ball is coming. 
Of the five hits he allowed in game number two, three of them were infield singles, and he was ahead, particularly through the first six innings, of virtually every hitter. I don't think three days rest is going to bother Keeson because he's done a considerable amount of relief work and uh, probably has been used on back to back days out of the bullpen in his life. Now he will pitch to Paul Molitor who is four for 16 with two runs batted in uh, with the two home runs and uh, five runs batted in and Molitor takes ball one from Keeson. It is a soreness around the fingernail. Of the index finger that is a bother to him more than a blister and it's something that he has been troubled by throughout his major league career. Well, a lot of times you put a lot of pressure on your both your forefinger and your middle finger and uh, remember a playoff game I pitched where I think I struck out 12 batters in 1973 and the back of my middle finger the nail underneath uh, the skin underneath the nail turned black and blue just uh, trying to th uh, maybe overthrow. Molitor hits it to left field, base hit. And it drops in there like an eight iron, and Molitor's going to second base, and he's in there. Little hustle. He started running from the minute he hit that ball as hard as he could, and if he had not, he would not have been able to take that extra base. And here you see the uh, some of the effects of the rain yesterday and the wind blowing out. And here you see the ball. It's kind of hooked into left field. Downing because of the wind to left field. He's playing a little bit deeper. He's hustles on the ball. Maybe a little bit slower because of his knee. Molitor is going for the double all the way and into second base easily. So the Brewers respond as Molitor stands at second base with a leg double and Robin Yount steps in. Be interesting to see if Robin Yount will try to go to right field to get him over to third base here or if uh, uh, Harvey thinks that he would prefer the beginning himself. Robin has not knocked in a run so far in the series. He does go to the right side and it's foul in the seats. Robin's one of the fellows that can do that uh, as well as anybody in in the American League. And in our last series, every time we threw him a good pitch on the outside half of the plate, it looked like it went for a base hit into the, into right field. Well, he's, he's hit 14 balls, and all of them in, have been in the alleys or up the middle in this series. And a lot of people wonder why Robin Young could have 46 doubles and 12 triples, mainly because he hits the ball in the gaps. He's the type of guy that hits the ball up the middle, and he's strong enough to hit 29 home runs, too. Sounds a little like the most valuable player to me. <laughs> Well I think that the reason that they they yell at MVP here obviously when you uh, hit over 300 you get over 200 hits you hit 29 home runs uh, you lead the league in doubles have 12 triples and you probably or you might most likely win a golden glove at shortstop they consider you for the most valuable player award and the ability to move the runners over and hit and run one ball and one strike one Robin Yount Eason checks the runner. And Yount hits it sharply to Gritch. Gritch wanted to go to the third, decided against it, threw it at the Lou at first. The runner moves over with one out. The ball was hit hard, and uh, I'd like the fans to realize just how tough a play that is. Uh, the good play that Bobby Gritch made on a short hop, you'll see it hit right at his feet. He had thoughts of going to third. It was hit so hard, but uh, if he'd have thrown it, it would have been a silly play. Cecil Cooper now with an opportunity to get the Brewers even. The tying run in this first inning is over at third. Molitor, good speed. Cooper at the plate, two for 16. And they're going to play the infield back. A wise decision as a pitcher. You don't want to have that big inning. And if you play the infield in and they get a single, then you have uh, Simmons coming up, another man in scoring position at first base. So. Give them that run now and stay away from the big inning and hope that your bats will come alive. Especially since you have one on the board already. Bruce came out of Pasco, Washington. Got his major league career and it's cued slowly to Desenso at third. He chases the runner back and they just get Cooper at first base. Nope. Did he change his mind? Drop the ball. Drop the ball. The umpire had him called out already yep. and uh, Cooper was going to argue the play. If we can see it again, you'll see Cooper jump up. Cooper did not know that the first baseman had dropped the ball. And a wise base running play by Paul Molitor at third base caused that to happen. 
he gave Doug a fake as if he was going, uh, Doug DeSensei a fake as if he were going to go home. Doug had to stop. Watch him. He gives him a fake. Doug had to stop. He had to stop him, and it caused a bad throw to first base. It's an error on DeSensei on the Cooper play at first base. The throw was in the dirt. So we've had three errors in the ball game already. Two by Milwaukee and now one by California. And Simmons hits the ball to right. Jackson over. Gloves it. And Molitor tags and he's coming. And it's cut off by the rule. And we're even at one. Cooper holding at first base. Reggie showed a strong arm, but it was just hit too deep uh, to have a chance to throw a man out at home plate. Reggie hit the cutoff man perfectly, though. Simmons wasted no time. He liked what he saw on the first pitch and nailed it. Well, the ball was hit hard, Keith, and it doesn't seem that Keeson is throwing as well as he was in California. The ball doesn't to be, seem to be sinking. As most sinker ballers, as we saw in Tommy John uh, yesterday, you want to try to get him early in the ball game, and we're just going to have to wait and see if he starts making a little bit better pitches. I'll agree with you. I don't right now think he's throwing as well as he did in California, but he might try, be trying to establish his pitches too, Jim. Ben Ogilvy, left-hander to the plate, one for 11. Foul. They've had some pretty good cuts up to this point. And there have been some balls hit hard already. Well, that'll happen in the first inning. I, I, as a starting pitcher or any pitcher, I think the first inning is the most difficult one you're going to have in, in many cases, mainly because you don't know the mound. Uh, the mound here in Milwaukee does not slope as well as the one out in California. And it just takes a while to get accustomed, see what pitch is working for you. What about the difference in bullpen mounds compared to the uh, mounds you're going to pitch on in the game? Well, they all differ. A perfect example, the one up in the Kingdom in Seattle is looks like a ski slope. When you warm up and you get out on the regular mound, it's much flatter, so you have to adjust. And uh, that's one thing that a starting pitcher has to do, and even a relief pitcher. In fact, a relief pitcher has even less time because he's usually coming in a situation where the ball game's on the line. One ball and one strike count to Ogilvy. Sharply struck. Carew, look what I found. Grab at first base. Steps on the bag to retire the side. Well, this first inning opens up like we are going to have some fun this afternoon in the American League Championship game of 1982. After one, it's tied at 1-1. One -one. It's a little shaky in the picture, but there's a look at downtown Milwaukee with Lake Michigan out there in the background, and we pull back that picture coming from a top county stadium. We back out here, and now you see the helicopter flying around up there, battling the elements, and the elements are decreasing in quality, I should say, as uh, they tell us another storm is on the way. Don Denkinger back at the plate, calling the balls and strikes. Al Clark at first base, Larry Barnett second, Bill Kunkel third. Left field line, Rich Garcia, Steve Palermo, right field line. This is the third big ball game in recent years for Don Denkinger. He was behind the plate last Sunday in the Baltimore-Milwaukee showdown. He was also back at the plate in that playoff game between the Yankees and the Red Sox in 78. And DeSensei bunts it perfectly for a base hit on the first pitch. Doug DeSensei had the third baseman, Molitor, well back of the bag at third, and he just lays it down. And taking advantage of Molitor playing deep, uh, maybe this is an advantage of a five-game series. Uh, the groin pull that Doug had in the first game and the second game has seemed to have gotten a lot better. Batter now is Bobby Gritch, as DeSensei has tied a league championship series record, as you see reflected there. And uh, Gritch squares to bunt, and it's up high. Molitor in on the grass at third base now as Gritch showed bunt on the first pitch. And Vukovic lobs it over to first base. Tim Foley is on deck. This is the portion of the batting order that Gene Mark uses for what he calls little ball, moving runners around, and it's been productive for him all season long. Gritch fouls it off at the plate, and the count is one and one. 
it, I'll tell you, as far as, as a sacrifice is concerned, or if you're going to bunt for a base hit, uh, with the rain that fell yesterday, the infield is soft, and it's going to kill the ball, and it's going to make it easy, easier to sacrifice and also easier to bunt for a base hit. I think the infielders are going to have to come up because the grass is a little bit slow. The way Keeson looked, I'm not sure that uh, I wouldn't, uh, for a few innings at least, uh, go for the big inning. Play and catch at first base. The hold to Sensei as close as possible. Not listed as a speed man, but he reads pitchers well and has better than average speed. Rich again squaring DeBunt. And the pitch is up high and away. Two balls and one strike. We've now moved into a pretty good hit and run situation. Vukovic uh, is going to have to come into Bobby Gritch. Uh, DeSensei showed us that uh, he's feeling a lot better, and Doug can steal some bases. DeSensei goes. The pitch outside. The throw. They get it. Simmons put it right where it had to be to get him. A perfect throw, and uh, evidently it was more of the run and hit rather than the hit and run. Because if it was a hit and run, Bobby was supposed to help him out and, and try to get the uh, bat on the ball. Bobby took a high fastball. I think it was a fastball. And Simmons put the ball right there. Anything else, and the sensei would have been safe. The bases are clean, and Dix with a swinging strike. They run the count to three balls and two strikes. And again, you saw Vukovic coming back three and one with a slider. He does not mind pitching with three balls on the hitter. He does it almost all the time. Uh, in 223 innings, he walked 102 batters this year. So I think a total of uh, maybe 300 and some runners in 223 innings, and yet he still had a fantastic year, 18 That's and foul. six. Well, that's why you win 18 games. If you can get a breaking ball over when you're behind, you're going to be a successful pitcher. Rich, breaking his bat, going to go get another piece of lumber. One of the things we saw in Vukovic's performance in game number two, he was unsettled, rocky, in the first four innings of that ball game. But from that point on, the final four innings that he pitched, he got into his pattern, and he got tougher and tougher and tougher. A big guy from Western Pennsylvania. Jim, do you think he looks a little more rustic than the other games that we've watched? Strikes out, good. And Pete's in a hurry to get off the mound. He thought that was strike three. I wonder if we could, uh, if we had a camera on the pitcher right after Bobby Gritch uh, swung at that pitch. He'll be pitching now to Tim Foley with two down. Jimmy, two for 13. A little high. That's good. One and one. This is one of those games where if plan A isn't working for you, see you later. There is no time for plan B. There's another strike on the outside corner. One and two. Over the top, missed with it. Two and two. It's working quickly. Three and two. So, two successive hitters. He's gone to three and two. It's the same thing Jim's been talking about. He makes his best pitches when he's behind. Holy throws the bat at the ball, strikes out on a breaking pitch, and he is gone. California gets the leadoff man aboard, gets him thrown out after one and a half, a 1 1 game. A week from tomorrow night, October 18. ABC's Monday Night Football Superstars. Unless, of course, they've got the ball on the tee, then uh, it'll probably be different. But 
Well, you've got Mark Gastineau, who finished third in the World Superstars competition. James Lofton, who was a great long jumper at Stanford. Franco Harris. And Danny White's among those involved. So the ABC's Monday Night Football Superstars, a week from tomorrow, live at 9, 8 Central Time. Norman Thomas comes to the plate, and this will be a very interesting moment in this ball game to see just how he performs at the plate, just how much that very, very sore knee is going to affect his work at the plate. It didn't seem to bother the batting practice swing. Of course, a little bit different once the game starts. It is his right knee. It's interesting, uh, in the interview, he said he talked to Mike Schmidt, and they kind of have contrasting styles. Mormon's kind of a little bit up on the plate trying to pull the ball, and and there you see a good fastball by Keeson on the outside part of the plate. Yet Gorman always seems to be a, a pull hitter that's trying to jerk the ball. I mean, it's a good day for him to be hitting today because of the wind blowing in the left field seats. One and one. I wonder how much his knee will affect him defensively and if he can get to the same balls today uh, that he could have before he hurt it. Don Money waiting on Beck and then Charlie Moore against Bruce Keeson here in the bottom of the second inning in a 1-1 ball game. And that's a foul ball. He limped. He limped down the first baseline and he's limping a little bit on his way back. The limp is very noticeable there. Two strikes. Check swing, roller, second baseman Gritch limping to first base, thrown out. The limp is very, very obvious. Running like that, I just don't know how he's going to be able to get to uh, fly balls in the outfield. The break from the plate, very slow. You see him dragging the leg. So. Tuck that away, it may become a factor. Here's Don Money, the designated hitter. And this is the, I think, the first lineup surprise we've had all series. Uh, normally, Roy Howell would be playing against the right hand of Bruce Keeson. Of course, the home run stats of Don Money 16 and 275 times at bat, and Roy only hit four and 300. So, with the wind blowing out and being a pole hitter, Maybe he's going with Don Punt Money because he's number one, probably had more experience in, in big games and also as a pole hitter with the, the wind aiding his swing today. He's done well against right-handed pitchers. One ball and one strike. Inside corner. Jim, I don't know if you'll believe this or not, but uh, I have had uh, the wind influenced me when I've made up lineups and especially in Fenway Park. One two pitch to money. Got him. So Keeson gave him some good pitches one he didn't like very much and strikes him out. And here you see the sidearm breaking ball. Don not much of a swing. Definitely fooled on that pitch. Quality pitch. Charlie Moore, right fielder, number eight man in the order. Five for ten in the series. Nothing big, but pesky. That's the type of hitter he is. It seems like the pitchers have settled down. We've had uh, three strikeouts out of the last five men that went to the bat. Hits it up in the air to the right side, carrying out in short right field area where Reggie Jackson and Fred Lynn bump together, and Fred Lynn makes the catch cutting in front of Reggie. And once again, we had players bump together. We had a ball fall yesterday in the infield as Milwaukee messed it up. They get away with this one, and we're 1 1 at the end of two innings.
this uh, really shouldn't happen, ball players running into each other. Bobby Gritch is standing there in the circle calling one of the, one of the two of the players. I don't know who he's calling, but with the crowd noise, they just can't hear him sometimes. And uh, they're lucky that uh, they got the out on the play. Also lucky they didn't hang hard enough to hurt, hurt one another. Bob Boone leads off for California in the top of the third inning with Brian Downing and Rod Carew to follow. Vukovic delivers and he shoots it up the middle into the left center field area where Gorman Thomas hobbles over and picks it up. And Bob Boone's aboard with a single. And it kind of continues the pattern that Vukovic has had with Bob Boone. He hit the ball hard on Wednesday night three times and they were all fastballs in the middle of the plate. He just threw him another one and he hit the ball hard into center field or at least into left center. And for the third successive inning the California Angels have the leadoff man aboard Downing coming to the plate now double to lead the ball game and came around to score California's run. We're even at one one. Squares to butt puts it down on the first base side Carew uh, or rather Cooper and Cooper throwing to Kentner. As Boone scampers on down to second base and stands there. So with one out, here is Carew. Downing leading off, moved around to come on and score the first run. Now Boone's out at second base. And Carew, who hit a fly ball to left field his first time up, stands at the plate with one out. This one is for the American League pennant, the fifth game of the championship series. Each has won twice on the home field. And Vukovic delivers to Peru inside ball one. Harvey Keene, the manager of the Brewers. He's outside with a pitch and goes to two balls and no strikes. Gene Mack is uh, going to be content trying to get him one at a time. But really, if you can get one an inning, that's nine for the game. Change of speed. It's low. Three balls and no strikes to Peru. Reggie Jackson is waiting. and second. One out. This is Reggie's situation. He certainly loves to hit. Well, I found it interesting that the first time up, uh, Molitor made a great play of his line drive. He was going to left field. Vukovic pitched him away, and Reggie was content going with that way. And I think the reason is that in batting practice, hit innumerable balls out in left center field today. He knows that he can hit the ball to left and hit some home runs. And he drives the ball awfully well that way. Foul ball. Just barely down the right side as Cooper made a dive for it. Vukovic might have the same feeling. He went in with him that time, Jim. Reggie can hit the ball over the left field fence as well as any left-handed hitter in the league, and he's getting a little bit of help with the wind blowing out that way today. He broke his bat. He'll get a new one. Red Lynn standing there. He is the next scheduled hitter. One out. Vukovic has been behind in the count on eight of the first 11 hitters. It's not the way I'd like to pitch, but again, as we've said, and we hate to be redundant, that's his style, and it's been a very effective over the last couple of years. See if he's gotten himself in a hole here. 
One strike on Reggie. Runners edge off. Comes inside again. Backs him off a little bit. Make it one and one. Bob Boone at second. Rod Carew at first. Now one and two with the score tied at one here in the top of the third inning. See the ball bounce up off Reggie's knee as he fouled it away at the plate. I don't think that pitch was where Vukovic wanted it, really. It wasn't in or it wasn't out. It was just a high breaking ball in the middle of the plate, but the speed fooled Reggie, and he just got a little bit on top of it. And here you can see move Simmons moving in. Threw him a hammer up high and got him. Well, it was right where Simmons moved, and I think after you see so many breaking balls and he pops the ball high in the strike zone and Reggie being a much better low ball hitter unless you do that get the ball out over the plate and here you see the high fastball Reggie just can't quite get to it swings right through it and with two out now and two on and a one one ball game Fred Lynn coming to the plate. A strike. Fred Lynn single his first time up. Moved up to second. When Ogilvy bobbled the ball and he expired there. I think an interesting thing on Fred Lynn, uh, Earl, is that they are pitching him contrary to the way we pitch him. We've had a lot of success going in on him and they've been staying away. And you can see the stats. Nine for 15 are not been very successful doing that. Well, it took us three years to find out that. Uh, the best place was under his hands and uh, if you have any success I think that's where we found we had the most but he Fred don't have uh, a lot of holes at home plate and there's just not many places to throw the ball that he can't hit it. A two strike pitch to Fred Lynn. Reaches out, slaps it into left field for a base hit. Bob Boone comes around third. Ogilvy overruns the ball, and the California Angels go back on top, two to one. Lynn continues with his hot bat. Looks like an off speed pitch away. He kind of gets fooled. He's out on his front foot. He just pokes it in the left field. And again, they went away with him with a breaking ball. And he got another base hit. And Ben Ogilvy has his second error as he overruns the ball. Baylor swings and a little foul tip that Simmons catches for strike one. Well, the conditions will have a little bit to do with that. Uh, they're trying to get into the ball. It's not rolling all the way out to them like it would do if the ground were dry, and uh, they're running right past it. I really think he thought he might have a play at home plate with the speed of Bob Boone and uh, discharged and wasn't able to come up with it. Baylor makes it high for one ball and one strike. Rod Carew. Moving around the third base as Ogilvy overran the ball. Don Baylor at the plate with Fred Lynn out there at second. And the 1-1 pitch is hit high in the air to the left side. Robin Yount going back to win, taking it back, taking it back, and he makes the catch for the third out. So Vukovic is able to get Baylor, but California gets one run and takes the lead 2-1 in the middle of the third. 
That picture from a helicopter carrying one of our ABC cameras up above County Stadium in Milwaukee and uh, gives you not only a perspective of the area and the ballpark, but I think also gives you some idea of how brisk the wind is blowing. Just a few hundred feet up in the air, and it's pretty brisk down here, too, as Old Glory is just stretched flat out behind the left field wall. Yep. We will move now to the bottom half of the third inning with Milwaukee and Jim Gantner will lead off to be followed by Molitor and Yount. Gantner broke through yesterday for his first base hits of the championship series. Got two and they were productive. Matter of fact the bottom of this uh, Milwaukee lineup yesterday was very productive. Uh, Brohard Moore and Gantner accounted for five runs and went Six for ten. I was really impressed how much confidence Gene Mock had in Bruce Keeson. Uh, it might have something to do with the fact he's 31 and seven in September and October, but he had perfect confidence that uh, Bruce Keeson will do whatever it takes to win today. Two balls and no strikes. That one was outside and away. Side misses three balls and no strikes to get her leading off the bottom of the third. It's not Keeson's style to pitch from behind, though. No. He walks Gettner on four pitches. Now the second time around for the top of the order Molitor and Yount and Cooper with Gantner on first base. The temperature 58 degrees and the wind gusting up to 25 miles an hour. But dry thank goodness. Yes. And this is the uh, part of the order that they will hit and run with. Tries to bunt it. It was not a sacrifice. He was uh, going for a uh, base hit on that. He didn't square around at all. He dropped the bat. He didn't want to give uh, away the fact that he was bunny. And he's a good one. There is a along the lines both at first base and third base. It is it sloped fairly sharply. Yes it does. And again I would like to mention that uh, the infield is a little damp and uh, it slows the ball up. Swing and a miss by Molitor. He's an aggressive hitter. And he's behind now. Two strikes. Now the Sensei can move back at third base. He's back off of the grass now, but two or three steps behind third base. Gander creeping off first. Pitch to Molitor. Foul tip stays alive. Being up in the booth the first time, Keith, uh, on the low pitches, uh, I really have trouble seeing whether yes. they're fouled off or not. It's hard. The sight line, too, we're not exactly behind home plate here, so the umpire and uh, a right-handed batter makes your vision particularly difficult. See where the Rooney sets the target. Pitch goes inside. I'm not so sure, Jim, that uh, Booney is always able to set a target here unless he is insisting on it because of all of the various angles that, uh, as you said, Keeson uh, creates with well, his varying style of delivery. Well, he tries to give him a location. Yeah, he doesn't want to do it too early because then the hitter can see that. But there you'll just see uh, he just kind of leans in on Molitor and. Uh, you kind of throw it for the back of the glove and some catchers I mean everybody's different and uh, some catchers give a much more obvious target he looks like he just kind of gives him the back of the glove and Keeson his ball runs so much and he as you said throws from so many angles that if he gets the ball in the inner part of the plate the ball is going to do some kind of movement and uh, that's what you want. 
One ball and two strikes now to Paul Mulliver with Jim Gantner off first base. It really looks like Boone's an excellent catcher to throw to. We've talked about his ability to throw runners out, but gives a nice target, a nice low target, and moves very well. One, two. To the hole, left field, base hit, Molitor. Gantner turns at second and stops there. So the Brewers, falling behind two to one, come battling back now with Gantner at second, Molitor at first for Robin Yout and an exuberant fan exhorting the crowd to let's make more noise. Well, we'll see if Harvey Keene is going to uh, move his runners over right now. Uh, Doug DeSensei is giving a few uh, bunt signs. Each club in the American League has defenses that you work on uh, in situations like this. Sometimes the third baseman will charge, sometimes the first baseman will charge, and you work on them a lot in spring training. And it's getting harder and harder to get the ball down. But Harvey Keene just decided that he was going to let him swing away on that pitch. It was high and tight. Harry Warner, the man at third, coaching there, passing on the signs, and Ron Hanson over at first base. And uh, Andy Hassler and Steve Rinko have now begun to move around. In fact, they're now throwing in the California bullpen. Hassler and Rinko. Yout hits it sharply. Desensei on the bag at third. Over to second. One and a good hard slide by Molitor at second base. Takes Bobby Gritch down. And uh, Harvey gambled. Doug Desensei made a very good play. It was a hard hit ball down third. He thought he thought very quickly. Once he got it, he got the lead runner. A lot of times the third baseman will go to first on this play. But Doug knew he had time to throw the runner out at second. And now there are no runners in scoring position. I tell you, they came pretty that gum close to a triple play. If Molitor doesn't take Rich down at second base, they might have been able to wheel three. Yount runs pretty good, uh, but he certainly did get taken out of the play. Yount on first base on the fielder's choice, and Cecil Cooper stands at the plate. Coop only two for 17. Runner goes. He swings and it's foul. The out will come back. That's the run and hit right there in place of the hit and run. That was, uh, they were going for a stolen base, but at the same time, the hitter's got to go ahead if it's a pitch he likes and he wants to swing at. The hit and run would be that uh, when the runner takes off, the hitter has to protect him by trying to hit the ball no matter where the pitch might be. Deep breath by Bruce Keeson. A one strike pitch to Cooper. The runner goes again, and Cooper again fouls it away. Now he might have had a whack at a bad pitch there. It looked like it might have been a little offside and low. Well, he is a good low ball hitter, and I think one of the reasons that uh, Cecil Cooper would uh, be hitting and struggling in a playoff like this, they've seen so many left handers. If there's any, if he has any weakness, and it doesn't mean that he cannot hit left handed pitching because he does. Tommy John did pretty good uh, job of making good pitches with him. There's the bullpen. Hassler is the left-hander. Steve Rinko, the right-hander. Rinko was a very important member of that California pitching staff, particularly in the early going this year. A two-strike pitch to Cooper. Yount does not go, and the pitch is outside and low. If the game stays the way it is, there'll be a little second-guessing as uh, to the bunt situation there and and Harvey Keene letting Yount swing away but I'd like to go on record saying I, I would have let Yount hit in that situation myself swirling dust right now Cooper comes back in two out Yount at first and a one two count Pitcher's best friend helping Bruce Keeson here, the double play. 
Robin Yount is going to run if he gets half a chance. If uh, Keeson forgets about him or isn't quick with his delivery to home plate, Yount is going to try down, to get down in scoring position for Cooper. One, two to Cooper. Again, this being a situation where even if Yount would be thrown out, you don't mind having a guy that had over 200 hits. 313 on the year leading off the next inning. You're going to make a good manager, Jim. That pitch is outside. It's two and two. They can second guess all they want, but if I was managing and I had a guy like Robin Yount up 210 hits on the year, I think I'd let him hit away too. Keeson yep. just made a good pitch. Got a sinker down and in, and Robin uh, hit it right to the sensei. And as you well know, Earl Weaver, if you're intimidated by second guessers, you're in the wrong business. Right? That's exactly right. Swing and a miss and strikes him out. So Cooper strikes out on a fastball thrown to the outside. And the Milwaukee Brewers are turned away thanks to the double play. California leading two to one. The RCA Video Disc Player. No other video product in history has sold more in its first year. Just look at why. The RCA Video Disc Player lets you see great entertainment on your TV with a remarkable picture and now even stereo. Players start at $2.99. Plus, if you buy one now, you'll get two video discs free direct from RCA. That's right, two free, but hurry. Full County Stadium in Milwaukee for the championship game of the American League season for 82 and for the California Angels here in the top of the fourth inning it's Doug the sensei Bobby Gritch and Tim Foley. The sensei a base hit first time up and then was thrown out by Ted Simmons as he tried to go to second base and he cues that foul. Vukovic has thrown 50 pitches in this inning. About 50 pitches uh, in this game, I should say. Well, he's the type of pitcher that throws a lot of innings. Maybe that's why he's had some problems with his shoulders. 130, 140 pitches is nothing, mainly because, as we've said all day, he pitches from behind. Doesn't mind the 3 2 count. Spins the sensei around as he buzzes him high and tight to go two balls and a strike. the corner fair ball ricochet by Ogilvy this inside a second double I thought the pitch was up and we've mentioned this before but Doug Desensei is a real good high ball hitter and it's the fourth successive inning in which the California Angels have had their leadoff man aboard watch it just fair, about a foot. A game of inches, they say. And now Bobby Gritch. Bobby hitting in the number seven spot in Gene Mark's batting order today with Tim Foley moving to the on deck circle. And again, it'll be interesting to see if Gene Mock uh, decides to bunt. Even with Tim Foley coming up next. That's him. Uh, Rich have a full swing at it. Slayton now. Jim Slayton. Right hander. And left hander Bob McClure up in the Milwaukee bullpen. Bobby Gritch goes to right field pretty good. He can uh, get the runner over in that manner if he. There's the sacrifice. Right down to Cooper. And he tags Gritch going by. As the sensei moves over to third. Rich is going to tell him that uh, Cooper tagged him with the, with. Uh, he tagged him with a glove but he had the ball in his hand and uh, I don't think Al Clark down at first saw that. Don Denkinger the home plate umpire coming out. And declares him safe. That's what the umpire should do. They should confer and get the play right. That's the most important thing. Ted Simmons Jim Gantner Harvey Keene let's have a look at it I don't know if we can see from this angle exactly which hand he has the ball in all right he's got it in his, he's got the ball in his left hand and tags him with the glove you're right I thought 
don't believe it. I have never seen it. I have never seen that before. There's the glove on the right hand. The ball clearly is in his left hand. Now Cooper reaches out and tags him with an empty glove. Are you telling me how many times you've seen that, Earl Weaver? Uh, it happened in a World Series. Elrod Hendricks tagged, uh, I forget the runner. Jim, do you remember the runner? I was pitching. It was Bernie Carbo who tried to uh, come in from <laughs> third base, but what happened was that I the, remember umpire, the umpire Ken Burkhart the umpire got in the way so he didn't have much choice he tried to reach around him with a glove in the in the ball but here and Bobby Gritz running hard right there as you'll see Cecil figures he has a chance to tag him but as it turns out Bobby kind of a he goes out of out. the baseline and, and, out, and that he? causes the problem I'm sure that the uh, Brewers are arguing that he was out of the baseline but Contact was made by Cooper and probably helped to effect it. It will go as a sacrifice and an error on the first baseman, Cooper. Well, Earl knows the ruling, but if a, I would imagine if a base runner goes out of the baseline to avoid the tag, he's automatically out. He's automatically out. You're allowed three feet, and that's what that we call it the 45 foot line down the first baseline. And a runner is obligated to run inside of that the last 45 feet from home plate to first base. Tim Foley at bat now as Vukovic pitches to him high on away. There's the 45. That's a double line. The 45 foot line coming down. The runner is obligated to stay in there. Rich is on first base. And Doug DeSensei is on third base. Nobody out. California leading two to one. Batting here in the top of the fourth inning. And the American League season is over after this ball game. Infield's back. Uh, they're going to go for the double play and concede another run. Look at it. Good pick inside corner. Two and one to count. I think Dankage did a good job in overruling Clark on the play. The object for an umpiring crew is to get the play right, even if you have to uh, change your decision now and then. Two one pitch and Foley fouls it away into the stands, out of play. Well, Denkinger, if he thought he was out of the baseline, and Denkinger evidently didn't, uh, could have ruled, uh, could have ruled him out for being outside of the 45-foot line. And I really, when we saw the replays, it seemed as if he were outside the baseline. The 2-2 pitch to Tim Foley. Popped up in the air. Cooper going back. Foul ground. Makes the grab. Rudder holds at third. One out. Now, the important thing I think here is where Gritch was before contact is made by Cooper and where he is when contact is made by Cooper. And I think that's what you ought to try to watch. Now, he's on the line now. Here's Cooper coming across. That's a 45-foot line there. That's a restraining border. Okay, now, Cooper coming across with the empty glove. He's on the line. Contact is made. He is pushed up. That's one argument. That could be an argument. Yes, I agree with that. Now we have time called as the plate umpire, Don Denkinger, is being administered to by Freddie Federico. Was he nicked by the foul ball or what? I didn't see anything. Uh, the ball went off sailing away. I wonder something if something have... came out of the stands. It was a catcher's mask. Catcher's mask. Rattled him around a little, didn't it? Oh, that's what happened. Oh, Ted Simmons uh, took his mask off and whacked him alongside the head. Unintentionally, of course. On the foul ball. No, well, he's all right. And let's resume now with one out. Bob Boone, the batter. And there are a couple of things we can look for here in the second game. They squeezed in this situation. That's good thinking. Bob Boone can handle the bat. I'd be, if I were in a dugout, I'd be ashamed of myself for not thinking about it, too. There it is. 
past the pitcher. Hard play. Cooper goes to second. Man is safe. Run scores from third. 3-1 California. And it was a suicide squeeze. The ball got past Vukovic. Cooper coming across, being a left-hander, could had no play at first base. Here comes Desensei he from third, and the butt is right past the pitcher's mound, and Desensei just walks home. And the reason Cooper, you'll see Cooper go to second here on this play is that Gantner, even though they did do it in the second game, doesn't anticipate it. I doubt if he could have gotten first in time, and Cooper tried to get the only out he could. Got a big inning building right now. Rich at second base. Boone at first base. Top of the order, Brian Downey. And the sky getting very dark. There's another storm coming. There's a strike. That's Rich at second. And that's Boone at first. Downing shoots it foul. Pass first base and into the crowd. Some of the Angel coaches have an interesting uh, theory on Brian Downing. Here's a man hit 28 home runs. 281 hit 326 back in 79. He's extremely strong, went on a weight building program. They feel that he has a tendency sometimes to swing too hard. Uh, he's too strong to have to do that. Maybe with a bad knee, he That's might be foul. trying to go a little bit more to right field. We saw him double down the right field corner the first time. Also, see that he's wearing his regular glasses today. Yesterday, in the rain, he went to contact lenses. And then when the rain stopped late in the game, he went back to the glasses. glasses. He just said it depends on sometimes the. Uh, the weather conditions. Simmons and Vukovic will talk now. Three to one, California. On Thursday, after two posts for comfort here on ABC, Richard Crenna and Patty Duke Gaston return to television for an outstanding new family comedy called It Takes Two. So you can have an hour of laughs this coming Thursday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Downing. Stands in as the runners edge off. Rich at second, Boone at first, and a one-two count in time. And what Pete Bukovic would love to have here is a ground ball at one of his infielders for a double play, get out of this inning, and hope that his team can get back in the game. Could be. Molitor to second for one, back to first, double play. Vukovic gets the DP ball as Downing shoots it sharply down to third. Molitor and Gantner turn it. And in the middle of the fourth, it is three to one, California. Well, after an unusual half inning in this fourth, as California, <laughs> then uh, uh, Cecil Cooper tagged a man without the ball in the glove. California able, however, because of the double play to score only one time to take a three to one lead. Now it's Ted Simmons, Ben Ogilvy, and Gorman Thomas for the Milwaukee Brewers. And Simmons had a sacrifice fly his first time up to knock in Milwaukee's run. California now seven hits off Vukovic. The Brewers have only two off Bruce Keeson. And they've done a good job on ten cent for Ted Simmons. Uh, super hitter in the hold of the three singles and 15 times at bat. They're pitching him well. First baseman Carew does it himself. Ben Ogilvy coming to the plate. Bruised his ribs two days ago. Play at left field. This morning I talked to him. Benji, how badly banged up are you? Well, I'm not really banged up that much. I think uh, when I ran into the wall, I checked it out with the doctors, and what I'm experiencing right now is a, just a couple of bruised ribs. Against Kiesel, he was tough the first time out. What are you looking for today? 
Well, I know he's not going to change his style, and I'm not going to change my style. So, and uh, we're just going to go out there and uh, do my best. And uh, I'm going to look fastball, and he mix it up a little with some ball speed pitches and sliders. So I think he's basically going to try to pitch me the same way. And Geeson gets the first pitch in for a strike on Ogilvy. He's been pretty quiet with the bat. Man who hit 34 home runs this year. That ball is well hit to the right side. Reggie Jackson looks at it. It's gone. Home run over there. Looked like an off-speed off pitch to me. It, uh, looked like a belt-high changeup in the middle of the plate. And as we've said, uh, Ogilvy moved off the plate. He says he looks fastball, but... He hit the breaking ball very well this year if you made a mistake with it. I know he hit a home run off me here in the county stadium on a high changeup after I got him out with the same pitch. And uh, Bruce just got it, and you'll see right here, throws him off speed pitch, and it's just kind of belt high in the middle of the plate. And when Ogilvy gets his arms extended and hits the ball solidly, it goes a long way. And it's a 3 2 ball game. Norman Thomas now comes to the plate. And we'll get some read here on the composure of Bruce Keeson. That's a strike. That's that low outside breaking ball that they've uh, that he threw Thomas in the last game. And that pitch is just tough to hit for a right-handed hitter. Well, especially a guy like Gorman, who's basically a home run hitter. He, the balls he really hurts you on are the balls in the middle of the plate. And talking about composure. Bruce Keeson, I imagine, knows he made a bad pitch. And, uh, you know, you expect those pitches to be hit by the good hitters. It's when you throw the good pitches and they hit them, that's when you start worrying. And uh, Count on back. Thomas, one ball and one strike. I can go back to last Sunday. Uh, I hit two, two, yeah, two pretty good pitches, and he hit both of them, and I got a little bit nervous. Goes inside with him on that one and gets strike two. the situation that Gorman said he didn't want to be in uh, the one ball two strike situation if he takes that pitch which was the ball he has the advantage strikes him out his third strikeout for Keeson his knee is bothering him bad as he swings uh, he, he just looks like he's afraid to put any weight on it at all there he may out. have to come out of it I really don't think Gorman, this is not the type of game that Gorman comes out of, but uh, I think really what's going to happen is Harvey Keene is going to have to make a decision if he doesn't think that he can do the job, and uh, especially out, out in the outfield. Exactly. It's one of the tougher decisions when you want to take out, I guess the manager has to make, or when you want to take out somebody that uh, has been an integral part of your success all year. You certainly can't let your heart interfere. Uh, we know Gorman wants to play, but is he capable? with the bad knee. Two balls and no strikes now to Don Money, and we have the first rain of the day. But we're used to it, so starting this play. We got used to that yesterday. After 13 hours. Popped up. Third baseman to Sensei. Foul ground. Has it. So Don Money fouls out. To Doug DeSensei at the end of the inning. Milwaukee gets a run on Oakley's home run. After four, it's 3 2 California. That's where I'm going next Saturday down to Charlotte. Bernard Taylor against Eusebio Pedroza out of Panama. Bernard Taylor used to be a cameraman for our affiliate station down in. Uh, Charlotte when he was an amateur boxer and now he's a very successful professional career going challenging for the title and right now in this challenge for title in the American League Rod Guru shoots it back to the pitcher Bukovic knocks it down and throws him out pretty close Reggie Jackson coming to the plate now and earlier today I've had a visit with Red here it is one more time, Reggie, the heat's on. Well, Keith, I think that uh, if baseball uh, dreamed up a story ending, then this is the way they'd have every series wrap up, World Series, playoffs. 
uh, end of the season in Baltimore with Milwaukee, end of the season with us over against Texas, the second to the last game of the year. Uh, it just seems funny that you play 166 ball games and come down to one to decide who the better team is. So I guess it really does show you uh, that professional talent is pretty evenly matched. Reggie is lined out to the third baseman Molitor and struck out swinging in two trips today. California leading 3-2 and you can hit a home run to the right side. We saw Ben Ogilvy prove that. The ball seems to be jumping all over the park. Uh, it wasn't batting practice. Wind has quieted down just a little bit. Look for it. Two and one. Reggie always goes for it. Very rarely we ever get it get him to take a swing that uh, his doesn't have the uh, potentiality of a, of a home run if he makes contact. Out at the plate and Vukovic is even at 2 2. He's really unloading. Hope changing speeds a little bit, moving the ball around. Ball count, 3 2. Reggie's got himself in a position at uh, two, only two hits and 17 at bats in the series where he wants to show everybody that uh, he can contribute. Look at it standing. Jackson winding up. Luka just letting him wind up and finally Reggie steps out on it. 3-2 pitch. Walk in. Second walk by Vukovic. And here comes trouble. Fred Lynn. Milwaukee bullpen is active behind Vukovic. McClure and Slayton up throwing again and Raleigh Fingers has gone down there. He is not throwing as yet. And we'll see if they adjust on Fred Lynn. They've pitched him away twice. He's hit two singles. And this is a way Reggie can contribute by getting on base for a guy that's really hot behind him. Fouled away off his foot. Reggie can still steal a base. In fact, uh, the year that he was with us, he stole uh, 27, I believe it was, in 29 attempts. And Reggie still runs good. Well, this year he only stole four out of nine attempts, but this is not the kind of ball club that runs a lot. Don Baylor in the on deck circle, one out for California, top of the fifth inning. We have had a little sprinkle of rain, but it has stopped for the moment. Top of the fifth. be able to get it in. Lynn swings and fouls it off. In Fred's two hits today, he has gone to left field both times. So he is taking what Vukovic has given him. Game three of the National League Championship Series tonight, 8 o'clock here on ABC. It'll be played in Atlanta between the Braves and the Cardinals. The Redbirds are up two games to none. Jackson off first. Pitch to Lynn is high. One and two. Two times in a row. Pitched him inside the last two pitches. Now what do you do? Well, if he goes out, he's liable to see another ball go into left field. Holding Jackson close at first. California dugout to the hole base hit right field Jackson around second going to third the throw by Moore he's out 
Morris convinced me he's got a pretty good arm, Jim. Well, he just convinced everybody because he came charging in. That ball made a perfect throw to Molitor, and he's taken Pete Vukovic out of a big inning. And there you see the bounding ball. No chance for Cooper. And Charlie Moore, watch this throw. Right on the money. Oh, I'll say it was on the money. And Ooh. that's a catcher playing right field. Of course, he's been out there all season long. And they finally took his name off of the uh, uh, catcher's position on the official American League roster, but not right till the end of the season. As a catcher, I mean to say. So Milwaukee comes up with a big defensive play. Two down. Fred Lynn at first base, and the batter is Don Baylor. Lynn now with 11 hits, and that ties the league championship series record held by Chris Chambliss. He set it back in 1976. 11 hits. Boy, that is a hot bat. Yes, it is. And California has eight hits, yet only three runs. Uh, So Vukovic has been able to get out of some pretty big jams, and that's what it takes. Well, so far he's been able to keep the ball in the ballpark and you can scatter those singles. And I think a typical line score in Vukovic is nine innings, about 11 hits, four walks, and only two runs. He does it all the time, and, and he's able to pitch that way. Gets a swinging strike on Don Baylor, like a two and one. Looked like he put a little extra on that pitch. Well, I talked to Donnie. He said he throws so much garbage, I want to move up on the plate because I can look for that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't think he meant that disrespectfully because I think everybody that uh, hits off Pete Bukovic knows that if, if you go up there not respecting the way he can pitch, you're going to make a lot of outs. Taylor takes it pretty close. Bukovic is the only Milwaukee starter in this series that has been able to hold Baylor's bat silent. So far. 3 1 count. Two out and Lynn off first base. And he hits it to right field. Baylor just sort of cued it off to the end of the bat. Moore comes in and Fred Lynn stops at second base. And rightly so. Because if he'd attempted to go to third, he would have been out also. You can see Baylor hitting, fighting off a high fastball, and Charlie Moore coming in just like he did on the previous play. Of course, there's no reason to go to third base in this situation. When Reggie tried to go to the third base, you had a one-out situation, and if you can set up a, a first and third situation, you can score on a fly ball or attempt a double play or a ground ball to the right side. I think we're getting a little bit of a sprinkle again over the ballpark. I told you a while ago it had stopped. Now I can see a few scattered drops falling again. It's still not a complete game. Doug DeSensei stands in for California. Two out and two on. And look at it, gets a strike. DeSensei with a single and a double and a score to run. They have to play five complete innings uh, in order for, for it to be a complete game. We're in the top half of the fifth. Uh, Milwaukee would be entitled to their at bat in the bottom of the fifth before this game would be an official ball game. The only way that's different is if uh, Milwaukee would be ahead, then the bottom of the fifth would become unimportant. As we had yesterday, once we got past the uh, top of the fifth yesterday, the Brewers were leading. And we had that circumstance where the game could have been called a complete game. But I would wager this, Earl, that if we are stopped by rain, we would wait a long time. A very long, long time. Because this is the championship game. One strike on Doug DeSense. Two strikes. Really remarkable when uh, Vukovic can concentrate, and yet how seldom he really does when the risky pitches to the plate. Well, 
I guess he has a lot of confidence in his ability to make good pitches when he has to. And uh, we've seen many times today he gets ahead in this situation. He usually throws a breaking ball. And you can kind of see what he's going to be doing. There you see Simmons moving to the outside corner. That's the fastball way up. You think that the sensei couldn't reach that outside pitch, but he steps right toward the, pet, uh, the plate with his left foot. And he, he has the uh, home plate covered well. Well, it's all good home run hitters. He likes to get his arms extended and 30 on the year. There's a good hard breaking ball that no chance. The sensei strikes out to end the inning as Charlie Moore comes in from right field having made a big play in the ball game and it's California three Milwaukee two in the middle of the fifth. Charlie Moore right fielder for the Milwaukee Brewers five hits and 11 trips to the plate and one big defensive play to throw out Reggie Jackson Fred Lynn a bouncing single to right field Moore charging it all the way Jackson going around second and Moore shot him down and without that type of throw they'd now be two runs down in place of one. Bruce Keese into the mound now for California to pitch to Moore Jim Gantner and Paul Molitor. Vukovic in the ball game has been touched for nine base hits. Milwaukee has committed four errors behind him, and yet California has scored only three runs. And Keeson now ready to go as Moore steps in. If you wind up playing for one run, you're more than likely going to get one run. You heard what he said. If you play for one run, you're more than likely going to wind up with one run. It sounds like an understatement, but it's really true. Thanks, Jim. That's why we always <laughs> never got one run. We always got more than that. A strike to more. And Keeson comes right back at him and goes low and away. One and one. Sidearm, a little looper, right to Gritch. One out. Coming up on That's Incredible. ABC's Monday presentation and Burt Reynolds, Candace Bergen, and Jill Clayberg starting over. Network television premiere on the Monday night movie tomorrow night beginning at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Jim Gatner, plate, chain, strike, balloon. It was a good pitch, and Gatner couldn't have been looking for it. Hard shot, hooks foul. Right side, two strikes on Gatner. Gatner has all. And I do mean all of the right field line. He also has all of right center field as Lynn is shaded well over toward left center defensively. See the big, big opening on the right side for Jimmy. And now look over there in right center. When he first uh, came to the big leagues, he tried to pull the ball a lot more than he does now. Hits it up in the air to the right side. Now the wind's got it. He's going to take it right almost back a second base for Bobby Gritch's catch two down and Molitor will come up now for Milwaukee. And this is the kind of this is the way definitely that you want Paul Molitor coming to the plate two outs nobody on. When he leads off the inning and gets on it just makes Yount and Cooper and, and Simmons much better hitters. And you had your druthers this is the way you want him coming up. Remember, Molitor has home run power. Shot set one foul. Hit 19 during the course of the season. And he is aggressive. But very much so. I think that, uh, of course, you can't complain about a guy that got 201 hits, but 
as he gets older he'll probably become a little bit more patient at the plate and, uh, when he gets to count 2 0 3 1 he'll even hit more home runs Fouls it away and advantage Keeson with two strikes he'll also continue to get stronger Dennis Mankey who uh, worked with him when he was in the minor leagues 1977 at Burlington was the man who helped him a great deal in learning to use the entire field take the pitch and go with it. Well that he does if, if you would say he had the only weakness that, that Paul really has is the fastball up and in and he fights it off well I mean it's innumerable bloopers over the infield just because he is strong and he can fight that pitch off. That's up around the bull of the cap one ball and two strikes. He's one of the real nice people in baseball. He's such a nice person. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch was lowered away. If California gets Paul out, it will become a complete game. And rain will not have an effect. If it were called because of rain, then it would go in the record books as a three to two victory for California. Of course, we probably should tell everybody it's not raining. It's not raining. But it may. All right, Molitor now, being a little more patient. As Keeson tries to get him to bite on a low pitch. Bruce has now gone to 3 2 with Molitor. That's Vukovic in the Milwaukee dugout. He has struggled today as he struggled in game two. This being a rematch of the two pitchers from game two. Game one by Keeson, 4 to 2. Full count pitch. Sidearm, Dimi fouls it off. Here's the fellow who was quite a hero yesterday. Mark Brohart had not played in the series. Went into left field against Tommy John, left-hander. Ben Ogilvy, bruised ribs. He had three base hits, including a two-run home run, and the two-run homer slammed the door on California, and he scored four times. Quite a day. Quite an afternoon. I imagine he'll go to 1983 with a little more confidence. He's strong at home plate. He's Side arms him on 3-2 and walks him. Now it will be Robin Yount. That is the second walk by Keeson. This is a running situation. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Paul Molitor tries to steal the base here. California. Three runs, nine hits and an error. Milwaukee, two runs, three hits and four errors. two on base so far because they've had only three hits and Molitor goes the throw is high and Molitor has stolen the base and had a very good jump I thought Keeson would throw over there once or twice in this situation uh, it's a running situation and there's no reason for Molitor not to try to get the second base he had a very good jump Simmons really had no chance at it. As long as uh, Jim it's Palmer's like, been around in that situation, I try to get up on the edge of the steps, which he hates me to do, and try to remind him that the runner might be running. And I can't tell you what I'd be telling myself out there. <laughs> now, you know that he's going to be running. You just want to get rid of the ball quickly and give your catcher a chance. Now, Robin Yap with two out. We'll try to bring him home and tie the ball game at three. Two balls and no strikes to count. But again, you go back to why uh, Keeson's in this jam is you have Molitor up at the plate 
he has home run power. You try to make a good pitch three and two. You end up walking him. And then he stole 41 bases on the year. He steals second, and now you have a situation where they conceivably could tie up the ball game with a single. That Go off, ahead with a home run. That pickoff play you just witnessed is not necessarily intended to pick the runner off, but uh, to keep him close so that it might give your outfielders a chance to throw the runner out at home plate on a hard hit ball. Houston down the out, two balls and no strikes. And now 3-0 with Cecil Cooper in the on-deck circle, a left-handed hitter. And I think he'll be swinging in this situation if he gets a pitch he likes. He took it 3-1. and one. He was taken all the way, too. The take sign had to be on because he didn't make any attempt to go after the ball at all. It is now three and two. And he had a downtown swing on that one. There's been a lot of exciting moments in this ball game already. Pitchers uh, always seem to be in trouble. Three two pitch coming with two out and he'll go he runs him back into second base. There was no play on that time it was just Keeson chasing Muller to back. Foul. Took him to the hands and got out in front. Jerked it foul in the dugout. We all know that Keeson does not want Cecil Cooper walking to the plate with two men on base. And Cecil Cooper, swinging from the left side, is due. He's been very quiet. Two for 18. Robert Young looking for his first RBI. 3 2 pitch. Ball four. So Molitor walks, steals second. Young has now walked. Pitching on three days' rest will come into the picture as the game pro progresses. Here's Cecil Cooper. Slow law of averages sticking its head into the circumstances here. Cecil Cooper's too good of a hitter to be quiet too long as Hassler and Renko get up for the second time in the California bullpen. There's a strike. Molitor at second. Yount at first. California leading three to two. Milwaukee hitting in the bottom of the fifth inning. The way Cecil Cooper stood and took that pitch, he's got something in mind. He's looking for something special right here. High and away, one and one. Anxiety, pressure, tension, whatever words you like, it's there. All of it. Use anyone you want. He went fishing for an outside pitch. That's anxiety. And Coop probably isn't uh, as selective as he would be during the ordinary se uh, season. He hasn't been in this series up till now. And there you see something unusual, a right-hander side-arming a left-hander. But the reason that Bruce Keeson does this is because his ball runs so well. And it just kind of ran away from uh, Cooper, and he couldn't quite foul it off. Angel owner Gene Autry sitting right behind him. President and general manager Buzzy Bavese. He just stayed here yesterday and just took the rain. He got something wet. Bounced right back out here this morning. Cooper fouls it back. I ducked on that one. I saw that. I saw that. 
That proves the reflexes aren't all gone. Out of the game a week, and he's ducking. Well, I wasn't a very good ball player. <laughs> If I was out at second base and that was in at me, I might have ducked. A graphic reflected there telling you something of Cooper's history, which is why you have to worry about the law of averages in a man like him. One two pitch, fouls it back out of play. Well, Keeson's making some good pitches. There's Octavia, Cecil's wife. They're from Brenham, Texas. Living in the Milwaukee suburbs now. Conference on the mound. And this conference could be about the fact that a lot of times the Milwaukee hitters will give location. Uh, the runner on second base will, through a series of hand signals, sometimes tell the hitter at the plate where the catcher is moving. It's kind of hard sometimes to pick up the signals. But you can let the hitter know if the catcher's going to either move away or they're trying to come in on you. Well, they've just uh, switched their signs because after Foley left the mound, he ran out and told Bobby Gritch what set of signs that Boone would be using. One-two pitch to Cooper. Two out and two on. Fouls it away. Sensei goes over to the rail to have a look. Win gets it and brought it back some, but not enough. The wind swirls around here at County Stadium, and it brought that ball back about four rows, but it still fell about four rows deep. Sanchez is now up in the California bullpen. Renko has stopped. Sanchez replaced him. Hassler continues. It'll be a one on one situation from here on in. By that I mean uh, the managers will have a special pitcher up for a special hitter. And they'll have to go to everybody in their, or want to go to everybody in the bullpen if they have to. Struck him out. So Keisha gets Cooper. And Milwaukee strands two. And after five complete innings of play, the California Angels lead the Milwaukee Brewers in this championship game three to two. Back with more after this word from our local station. The ribbons of concrete that ring County Stadium. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know it's getting cool, but that's ridiculous. For the California Angels. Going to the top of the sixth inning, it's Bobby Gritch, Tim Foley, and Bob Boone. Bottom third of the order, and they've been trouble today. Not Gritch so much as Boone. I've never seen Bobby Gritch uh, swing through more balls than I've seen him in this, uh, this series. Just too good a hitter to do that. But then again, Get a lot of guys that are streak hitters, and Bobby's that type of guy. Just don't see the ball as well as as they might be seeing in other stretches during the season. He pushed around a lot this season, his hand location and so forth, and he finally wound up going back to holding his hands right back on that hip. Well, the year he hit 30 home runs, he had his arms and hands over his head, and uh, was very successful that year. Molitor knocks it down. Got to hurry. Get you. That was a tough hop right there. That's a ball that's very easily booted. You'll see the last short hop right in front of him. It came, well, it bounced to his right a little bit. Third baseman ought to be entitled to have as big a glove as a first baseman. It's not a bad rule change. <laughs> Tim Foley. And the pitch to Timmy is high, ball one. The third baseman is just as close. Pop up. See how far it carries. Roman Thomas is pumping in. And you have a small gathering as the catch is made by Robin Young. Ordinarily, Gorman would be standing under that ball. That's the way I feel about it. Yep, he would be. You see the Yount. Right to it. Gantler came over to help as well. As they know full well, Gorman is playing with a very sore leg. Now Bob Boone. 
He's been missed to trouble today for Pete Vukovic. It's the ball in the air to right field for Charlie Moore. And so Vukovic gets California in order in the top of the sixth inning. And in the middle of six, the Angels lead it three to two. Luis Sanchez has come on here in the bottom of the sixth inning in relief of Bruce Keeson. Keeson with a strong five innings leading in the ball game three to two. Remember coming into the game he had a very sore middle finger and uh, would imagine that's a problem that has taken him out of the ball game. It's not exactly a blister it just gets very sore around the nail from the pressure that he applies on the ball. And it just got so sore that he didn't feel he could come out. Sanchez had been warming up in the pen as Bruce had uh, courted danger and probably had told uh, Gene Mock, perhaps even as long ago as the third inning, that it was getting sore. And once it reached that point, they had a man ready to come in. So this youngster can throw hard. But I would not think that Gene is depending on him to finish the game because he doesn't have that kind of a history. Well, he'll go to as many as he has to go to. Uh, last Sunday when we played for the Eastern Division Championship, I had Dennis Martinez, Flanagan, Palmer, everybody I had in the ball game. Simmons goes to the other side of the plate now to hit left-handed against Sanchez and Luis as ball one. That's fouled away. One and one to Simmons. Ben Ogilvy, who has homered today, will follow, and then Gorman Thomas. That is outside. The book on Keeson. Five innings, three hits, two runs, one earned, walk three, struck out three. Three balls and a strike to Simmons. Well, he throws very hard, but you also have to throw it in the strike zone. Gets it to left, Brian Downing. Holds his position and makes the catch. He took about two steps. One out now for Ben Ogilvy. Has rolled out to the first baseman for Lou. Actually, he hit a sharp shot that uh, Rod made a good play on, and Ben has hit a home run. Hit that one to right. The Angels up by one. Brewers at the plate in the bottom of the sixth. Then jumped on that first one, then sort of reached over to that right rib cage that he banged into the wall on Friday and making the play and wound up as a double for Fred Lynn. Late on that one. There you see the good fastball. Sanchez kind of evolved as the, the short man. They was pitching long relief early in the year and the uh, Angels had trouble all year trying to find somebody that could come in and put out the fire and Luis did an excellent job down the stretch. One ball and two strikes to Ogilvy. It seemed to me early in the year that he was very inconsistent because he threw a lot of breaking balls. He has a, a hard slider. He just would occasionally make bad pitches with that and get hurt. That's foul coming back to the left side. The sensei gives it a look and it's well back out of play. And often a short reliever, if used properly by the manager, can come in and just throw fastballs for an inning or two. Usually your short relievers will be two pitch pitchers, either a fastball and a hard slider, fastball curve. Uh, they don't usually go to all four basic pitches. Ogilvy. Hard swing on what looked like a very low pitch. And got just enough it to stay alive. Bruce Keeson, we're told now does have a sore finger but he also informed his manager Gene Mock that he was just simply getting tired pitching he, with three days rest he got one big out Cecil Cooper right before he came he out really the ball did. 
2 2 now to Ogilvy. Ed's been flailing away, has not been terribly selective in this at bat against Sanchez. 2 2. That's foul. Fouled off a pitch out of the strike zone and uh, swung through one that was way high. He could be on first base with a base on balls. One out. Pitch to Ogilvy. Struck him out. Two down. Here you see a good running pass. Paul Ogilvy goes out to get it, just runs a little bit away, and Ogilvy, who's a better low ball hitter, just can't handle a pitch up in the strike zone there. Can't catch up. He's he's also showing a little pain, it looks like to me. Or that he's feeling pain. Here's a man we know is feeling pain, Norman Thomas. Two out and the base is empty. With California leading 3-2 in the bottom of the sixth inning. That was not a good hard swing by Thomas. No, it was a good hard slider by Sanchez. And uh, he's thrown all fastballs this inning until he got to Gorman. And he has the ability to make the good pitch with the slider. And this is what's made him effective down the stretch. One and one. I would like my hitters now to try to get the long ball out of their mind if they could. So and try not to swing at bad pitches. Uh, try to get on base and get a rally started. Third baseman, Desense. In the dirt, but Guru handles it. And uh, Roman Thomas really hobbling on that sore right leg. Watch him as he makes the move toward first base. Just dragging the leg. Sanchez gets him in order after six, three, two, Angels. You're the umpire as in television presents You Make the Call. Ted Power of the Dodgers delivers and then tries to make the play. But as he does, the ball brushes off his glove and keeps on rolling. Was the ball fair or foul? You make the call. Here's an easy question for you. Which of these games is the closest thing to the real thing? A, in television NFL football. B, Atari football. Here they are again, close up. A, in television. B, Atari. If you thought A, in television, you're absolutely correct. You see, I told you this question was easy. On this play, you were right if you called it fair. Once a ball is touched in fair ground, it's a fair ball even if it rolls foul. You made the call thanks to Intellivision. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by on ABC's coverage of Game 5 of the American League Championship Series, the California Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers in a do-or-die effort. We are having technical problems on today's live telecast from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. ABC technicians are on the job trying to correct our difficulties, and we'll continue when that is accomplished. We regret the inconvenience. At the time of interrupt, the... Cal Tapper back to the mound on a check swing as Brian Downing is retired to lead off the top of the seventh inning. We understand we have power loss here or something that's caused the loss of the picture anyway and audio for a moment. But Brian Downing leading off for California at the top of the seventh inning taps it back to the pitcher Vukovic for the first out of the inning as Vuki threw him out. California's leading the ball game by a score of three to two. Here is Rod Carew at the plate now. He's been on base 
once today, having been walked by Vukovic, and Pete comes inside to him for ball one. The California Angels holding a one-run edge in this title game. Milwaukee has only three hits in the ball game. Bruce Keeson having left after five, replaced by Sanchez, who retired the Angels in order. They retired the Brewers in order in the bottom of the fifth inning. The rain clouds continue to grow more threatening as the day wears on, but we've had only one light little sprinkle so far. Lukovic now behind 3-0, comes back, gets a strike, make it 3-1 on Rod Carew. Misses and Carew for the second time in the ball game is walked by Pete Vukovic. One down and Reggie Jackson now will come to the plate. And Harvey Keene now is on his way out of the dugout. Walking to the mound. And it could well be that Pete Vukovic has had it. With Reggie Jackson coming to the plate, Bob McClure, a left-hander, has been warming up in the bullpen along with Jim Slayton. Don Sutton is out throwing in the bullpen as well, and knowing Sutton, he has probably said, Skipper, if you need me, I'll go out there and shake the kinks out. So Harvey Keene now going to the mound to talk to his big right-hander, Pete Vukovic, and whatever he said, it got a laugh out of Vukovic as they stand on the mound with Ted Simmons joining the conversation. So with Jackson waiting to come and the conference going on on the mound, Don Denkinger, the home plate umpire had started out there and now the signal from Harvey Keene that he wants the left-hander McClure. So we've got a timeout at County Stadium in Milwaukee. The California Angels leading by 4-3-2 in Milwaukee is changing the two. We still don't have a picture for you and so we're trying to find the problem and get it fixed. I imagine a lot of folks are running around looking for the problem right now. In the meantime, we are in a pitching change for Milwaukee. As Pete Vukovic goes six in the third, giving nine hits, three runs posted on the board. He struck out four during his time in the ball game. The Brewers committed four errors behind him. And uh, it's really remarkable that he was able to escape and uh, still be in a tight, close 3-2 ball game. Lefty Bob McClure has been summoned out of the bullpen by the Milwaukee manager Harvey Keene, principally to face left-handed swinging Reggie Jackson. I think what they're trying to do here is stay away from the long ball. McClure being left-handed, Reggie being left-handed, you take, uh, I guess you kind of somewhat erase the chances of adding another two runs to the Angels' score. Rod Carew having been walked by Vukovic is on first base. And the pitch to Jackson, ground ball, over to Gantner, one, over to Yount. Double play. So McClure comes in and certainly does his job as he throws one pitch up there. Jackson bounces it sharply into a double play. Gantner had a little trouble getting out of his glove over to Yount, but he was able to do it quick enough. And so it's 3-2 California, middle of the seventh. Back with four after this word from our local station. A replay on Bob McClure's entry into the ball game as we've got our picture back for you. A bouncer to the second baseman Gantner, a double play at first base, and the happiest person in the ballpark? Well, maybe Bob McClure, maybe Harvey Keen, maybe 50-odd thousand people, but transcending all of them, Jody McClure, as Bob gets the double play. Now we will go with the Milwaukee Brewers and Don Money, Charlie Moore, Jim Gantner to the bottom of the seventh inning in a 3-2 ball game. California leading Luis Sanchez in relief of Bruce Keeson. The winner of this one wins the American League pennant and goes to the World Series. And neither one of these teams has ever been to the World Series. A pitch just missed. And now is when the crowd comes in to focus with the loud cheering that could start the adrenaline, adrenaline flowing in the Milwaukee players. Right down the line. Just foul. Just foul. National League tonight. The Cardinals and the Braves. Game number three. Atlanta. The Cardinals lead that series two games to none. One, four, three. With a winning run, bottom of the ninth last night. 
A 2 2 count on Don Money. Popped him up. First baseman Guru comes in and makes the catch. Right at the pitcher's mound. One down. Charlie Moore, who has had one of the big plays of the ball game defensively for Milwaukee. He is hitless at the plate. Looking back on that, it certainly is a big play, and uh, it avoided a big inning. Charlie, 5 for 12 in the series, as well as 0 for 2 today. Eric dark and gray and threatening now as Sanchez is high and tight to Charlie Moore. I don't think that San Sanchez is pitching with any pattern. I think he's just throwing hard trying to get it over the plate. What do you think Jim. Well he's got a good live fastball. The only pitches that he seems to throw consistently are the sliders away and there's a jam shot a ball in on Moore's fist. I don't believe he caught. The I ball don't believe either. he caught the ball. No, Don Denting of the plate umpire says no he didn't. Al Clark the first baseman who was shielded away from it a little bit but the third base umpire uh, Bill Kunkel could see from where he was and Don Denking of the plate umpire could see from where he was that he did not catch the ball the first base umpire could not. Well if this keeps up we're liable to see one umpire throw another umpire out the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a base hit for more. <laughs> Well, that that is true no man's land right there. <laughs> they won't be throwing each other out of the game. But I would like to point out that again they got the play right, and that's the important thing. There's a man on first base now, and Milwaukee has the winning run at the plate. Or the go ahead, at least here in the bottom of the seventh. The tying run in Charlie Moore out there at first base. Jim Gettner, the hitter. The manager stayed out of the argument. Strictly, the argument was strictly the argument was between the umpires. The Charlie Moore family watching as it goes up the middle, base hit for Gettner. Charlie Moore turns second and stops right there as Fred Lynn is in in a hurry. Back-to-back -back singles now. One kind of different from Charlie Moore, but that was a line shot from Gettner. Oh, it was a fastball in the middle of the plate, and Ganner tries to hit the ball up the middle, and, and you'll see the fastball outside middle. Hits it right back at Louis Chanchez, who gets down. One of the first things they teach you in the minor leagues. You'd Duck if you can't ball. catch it. You'd have caught that ball. The sensei comes in from third to visit with Sanchez. The tying run now with one out is at second base and Charlie Moore. Go ahead runs Gantner at first base. The batter at the top of the order for Molitor. And Hassler throwing in the California bullpen along with Winko. Bottom of the seventh. Molitor swings and fouls it off and that one bit Don Denkinger the home plate umpire who's had a rough day back there. There's the bullpen left hander Hassler right hander Winko. Here you see the high fastball right off the umpire's mask. He's had a tough day. First Simmons <laughs> threw his mask at him. And he's had to overrule twice. That pitch is high and away. One ball and one strike and the crowd standing and roaring on every pitch now. Harry Warner comes out of the box at third. Molitor looks at him. He doubled to lead the game and scored the first one for Milwaukee. Popped him up, coming back. Bob Boone coming back. Desensei's there, it's Booney for the catch. And two down. Now an opportunity for Robin Young. Base hit will tie the ball game. 
Jim Gantner at first base has speed. An extra base hit. Milwaukee could go ahead. But it's that first thing that's the problem for the Brewers. The base hit. Yount today has rolled a second and a board on the fielder's choice and walked. He does not have a run batted in in the championship series. Strike. He looks like he's just firing the ball right for the center of the plate and letting it go wherever it goes. Ball one, strike one. The count on Yount. Charlie Moore at second. Jimmy Gantner at first. Rod Carew comes in from first. Bob Boone comes out from behind the plate to talk to Sanchez. They want to keep him calm. Whoever wins this ball game will go against the National League champion. For the World Series scheduled to start next Tuesday. One one be out. Inside two and one. Angels three, Brewers two, bottom of the seventh, tying run, second base. Cecil Cooper, who had an opportunity earlier with people on base, is waiting again in the on deck circle. Left handed hitter. Off the hands, foul back out of play. Milwaukee has just not been able to come up with that big hit in this ballgame so far. They've had a few opportunities, and if you keep giving this club opportunities to beat you, they can do it. Robin Yacht's grandmother sitting watching. Some anxiety on her face, too. Well, if you're again, you've got a conference on the mound with Boone and Carew talking to Sanchez and Den Kinger, the plate umpire, now going out to say, hey, let's play ball, guys. Ron Hanson, first base coach, talking with Gantner. Any idea what they might be talking about at this well, point? First well, place, it seems every time, uh, every time that uh, Sanchez throws a pitch and it's not in the proper area, he just threw a high slider that Yount fouled off. Uh, Rodney gets concerned, and of course Boone has gone out there twice, mainly because I think that uh, maybe they're not communicating very well. And I think in this particular case, they want to be sure. I'm What's sure Rod Carew's coming in to help, too, with the, uh, the English-Spanish problem that might well exist here. Well, Rodney being Panamanian. Panama, yeah. 2 2 pitch. Yacht fouls it off. Fought off a pretty good pitch that time. Well, he does. He just has, Sanchez just has a fastball that is so live that, as Earl has said, uh, going back to the variable chance deviation theory we sprung on you a couple of days ago, he throws the ball for the middle of the plate. Sometimes it's going to sail. Sometimes it's going to run in on the right-handers, away from the left-handers. He's just got good natural stuff. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Out again, fouls it away. Sanchez from Venezuela. Of course, Rod Carew, being a native Panamanian, having moved to New York when he was a boy, who speaks the language. You better be communicating with one another or you're going to get in trouble. That's true. 2-2, two, two, two out, two on, 3-2 three, two, California. High ball three. Excitement. That's Michelle, yeah. A prayerful attitude, I would think. Runners go inside ball four. The go ahead run is not second base. Tying run 
is at third. And once again, Cecil Cooper comes to the plate with opportunity staring him in the face. There are your base runners. Back in the fifth inning. And here you see the 3 2 pitch. It's a high slider. Just hangs inside for ball four. Back in the fifth inning, Cecil Cooper had Molitor at second base after Yount had walked and couldn't get him home. Struck out swinging for the third out. Now the bases are loaded with two outs. And that's how Sharpley hit it right off the end of the bat and shut it on the ground, bouncing up into the stands. There's the tying run, Charlie Moore. The go-ahead run, Gantner. And Yount at first. Just outside. One ball and one strike. This is very hard to do, but Cecil Cooper has to remain patient in this situation and try to get a strike to hit. He can tie this ball game up with ball four. He can work the pitcher to that. And, and being patient, uh, uh, you want to get a good pitch to hit, or if they're going to let you walk to first, do it. Left field, base hit, tying run. Moore comes to score. Gettner on his way to the plate. Throw through. Brewers lead. You just can't keep giving Cecil Cooper opportunities to beat you because he will beat you. Fastball up on the outside part of the play. Cooper just goes right with it. And you'll see Downing charge the ball, trying to keep the winning run or the go ahead run from scoring, and the throw's just off a little bit. Now, watch the man who delivered the big base hit, Cecil Cooper. Oh, yeah, he's happy. Very much so. And the Milwaukee Brewers have taken the lead. Four to three, and Gene Mock is on his way to the mound with a hook. He's got a switch hitter at the plate. And a tough one in Ted Simmons. A very tough one. Keeson tired, plus a sore middle finger on his pitching hand, came out after five. And when he left, it was 3-2 California. Sanchez came in and got him an order in the sixth but has not been able to do it in the seventh. And Andy Hassler is called in from the bullpen. 4-3 Milwaukee back after this word and the message on behalf of Major League Baseball. Hardly necessary to point out delirium reigns at County Stadium in Milwaukee, a crowd of 54,968 thundering their appreciation as Andy Hassler comes on to pitch in relief. Of Luis Sanchez, who had relieved Bruce Keeson, so he is the third California pitcher, making his second appearance of the series. Milwaukee getting the lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning, four to three. You have two out. Cecil Cooper delivered the big base hit. Robin Yount now, who had walked, is at second base. And the batter is Ted Simmons hitting from the right side against the left hander Hassler. A little more power from this side. Just about the same average. Uh, if anybody watched the playoff last Sunday, kind of did us in with a home run late in the ball game on a curveball. And he jerks that one foul down the left side. It was the eighth inning that they really pulled away from us. They've gone ahead in the seventh inning here. Hassler trying to keep them close. 4-3. Milwaukee. Strike. Simmons tried to check. It appeared. Went too far. And so, Andy Hassler out in front. 0-2. Andy Hassler's done a fine job for him this year. Many years ago had elbow surgery. I think once lost 17 straight games for the Angels. Got the good live arm, the good sinker, and the hard slider. That's a foul shot. 
into the stands back at third base. Mary Ann Simmons. That's right. Two out. A two strike pitch to Simmons with Yon on second and Cecil Cooper on first. And you know Coop feels pretty good. Having struggled all the way through the series, but then delivered a base hit to left field that brought home two runs to give the Brewers the lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And that pitch is low. One ball and two strikes. A lot of happy fans right now. One, two to seven. Fouled off. Fought off a pretty fair pitch there. Audrey Keene. <laughs> the pendulum of emotions, how it can swing, huh? You yes. gotta be in the dugout. It's like a roller coaster. There have been many games where you you get late in the game and you're trailing by a run and the, your team ties it up and then you go down by a run and you just never know what's gonna happen in this game. Especially when you pit two fine teams like these two teams. One two pitch to Simmons. Struck him out on, snapped it off inside on the hands, and Ted couldn't get it. And so the Milwaukee Brewers are out of there, but they score two and take the lead after seven innings of play over the California Angels, four to three. Coming to the plate to lead off for California will be this man, Fred Lynn. Fred Lynn, who has had a roaring playoff series. He has three singles today, which means he has 11 hits in 17 trips to the plate. And he will lead off. Earlier today, I talked with Fred Lynn about this championship game. The old pressure cooker. You've been there so many times. Is it any different today than it has been before for you? No, not really, Keith. Uh, we haven't done anything easy this year, uh, this ball club. Uh, we could have eliminated KC uh, early in KC, and yet we waited till the second to the last day of the season to do it. Uh, we haven't gotten any help from anybody yet this season, and we had to do it ourselves on key games, and we've been up to the task, but yet so have the Brewers. So I would say this game is going to boil down to who's going to score first and who's going to get that big inning. As a youngster, when you came to the major leagues, you stepped right into big ball games. As the years have gone by, you've had a succession of big ball games. You're a mature senior member of the American League and a true genuine star in the American League. Going into today's game, can you contrast your feelings today versus that very first year? Boy, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, every game is pretty much individualistic. Um, those games my first year, everything happened so fast to me that first season that it's really become a blur to me. Uh, right now, this is probably the biggest game that I've played in up to date. Um, it, it has more importance fixed to it than any game that I can think of other than sixth game of the World Series in 1975. The wind can at times. Oh, Freddie walks to the plate now. The lead off in the top of the eighth inning with his ball club down by a run and Marshall Edwards a flyer has gone to center field replacing the game legged Gorman Thomas. It has to be a real good move. see the sharp breaking ball that Bob McClure has similar to the pitch that he threw Reggie for the uh, double play to end the last inning. 
McClure goes just outside. Vukovic, six and a third innings, nine hits, three runs, and incredibly, all of them earned despite four <laughs> Milwaukee errors. And McClure relieving in the seventh and got the double play ball. And he has the edge on Fred Lynn now as he takes him inside, one and two. Don Baylor is waiting on deck. Doug DeSensei will follow. Any one of these three scheduled hitters can take it out. Lynn risks the ball out into left field. The wind carries it out to Ben Ogilvy. One out. Just risking the ball out to the left fielder Ogilvy. First inning, downing double, Lynn single. Angels led it one nothing. Third inning, another run. Boone single, downing sacrifice, Lynn single. Fourth inning, another run. Desensei double, grit sacrifice, Boone squeeze for a bunt single. Brewers scoring, Molitor double. Simmons sacrifice fly. Ogilvy home run of the fourth for the Brewers. Moore and Gettner singles. Giannis walk Cooper, a two-run single. That's the scoring summary on the ball game as Baylor swings and misses at a pitch in on the hand. McClure's going to have to put the ball in good spots to the next three hitters because, as you pointed out, they all can go downtown. had one hit a single but the right field for a base hit today in three trips That's foul back. the angel dug out Gene Mock standing there lost the way Bruce Haas taking a big side there he was tough yesterday in the rain, Baylor foul ball left side. Pitch before that Baylor fouled off was right there where he had an outstanding cut at it. I'd have to say McClure is a control pitcher and relies on change of speeds, right, Jim? Well, yeah, he tries to run his fastball in and away, and uh, I think his curveball has gotten a lot better. There you see the high fastball. As we've said all series, if you want to get Baylor out on a fastball, you want to kind of get it up in the strike zone. And here I think the most important thing is you don't want to be that fine that you end up walking Baylor and having the since they hit a two run home run. That's a foul ball and there's a breaking ball. I think many times Earl you said you can't get beat till you get a man on and that's true. In this case. Handsome looking fellow there. All decked out in his fighter. Two balls and two strikes. Molitor at third is more or less guarding the line, but there's still room to get in. A uh, uh, hard hit ball in between he and the line for a double. Baylor hits it to left. Wynn helps it out there. Marshall Edwards to the wall. Jumps, makes the catch. Roman Thomas is in center field. That's off the wall for extra bases. I have to believe that the way Gorman was limping today, and they got him out there just at the right time. Now, ordinarily, They'd never replace Gorman uh, with another defensive player because Gorman himself is an outstanding center fielder. But today with the injury, it's questionable whether he would have gotten there or not. I don't see how he could possibly have dragged that sore leg that far because Edwards is a speedster. He can really run. And he gave it a long run and goes right up and then hits the wall hard. So Marshall Edwards comes out of the shadows and makes a big play as Grohard did yesterday with two out here is Dr. Sensei and he shoots it to right field for a base hit going toward the corner takes a big turn and Charlie Moore whips it back in tying run for the Angels now on first base with two out the, sen the sensei went right with the pitch on the outside half of the plate again it was up and Doug's a very good high ball hitter. Cecil Cooper on the right side and obviously Molitor on the left side as you get into this point sitting on a one run lead you are protecting the lines Coop might have had a chance at that had he been playing his normal position at first base. 
So we're winding this one down with every nerve stretching second. Meantime, they are waiting in Atlanta for game three of the National League Championship Series between the Braves and the Cardinals. And we'll have it for you here on ABC tonight at 8 Eastern time. The Redbirds leading the Braves two games to none, having been rained out twice in St. Louis. Now it's Bobby Gritch, the Angels' second baseman, number seven man in the order. You have to think about a healthy Raleigh Fingers in this situation. McClure goes outside. The Gritch for ball one. This You've is got a Bobby, two out. Excuse me, Keith, but this is a Bobby Gritch situation. Of all the players, the two of the most intensity that I've ever played with were Frank Robinson and Bobby Gritch. Chain is high. Two balls and no strikes. Bobby's always had patience at home plate and tries to get that good pitch to hit. Sensei off first. Rich hits the ball in the air to center field. Edwards backs up on it. Hit it well. And makes the catch. So Marshall Edwards put into the ball game for defensive purposes in relief of Gorman Thomas. Made two put outs in the inning. One of them a big one. And Milwaukee holds on 4-3. Hey. We are USA 1. Coming up next after the ball game, except on the West Coast, Ripley's Believe It or Not. And those of you in the West will see it immediately following tonight's National League Championship game. Ben Ogilvy, Marshall Edwards, and Don Money for the Milwaukee Brewers. Bottom of the eighth inning, California with one more turn at the plate. And it'll be Foley, Boone, and Downing scheduled. And put scheduled in quotes. Because it might change. Andy Hessler delivers to Ogilvy. Ben hits it in the air to right center. Coming in, Fred Lynn. One out. Edwards will get an ovation. He hasn't swung a bat in this championship series, but he made a huge defensive play. This one, the ball going to the wall. Off the bat of Don Baylor, and Marshall Edwards pulled it down. So he has contributed mightily. Andy Hassler, low and away to Edwards for ball one. And Marshall Edwards has an unusual. I was watching him take batting practice. He keeps his, he splits his hands, kind of like Pete Ward used to do. He used to play for the White Sox. I've seen too many hitters do that. Chopped at that one and missed it. Ty Cobb hit like that, and I don't believe there was another one until uh, Pete, Pete Ward did it. Tommy John has now joined Steve Ranko in the California bullpen. Yesterday, starting pitcher. That's fouled off. It's staff day now. It's staff time. Because this is the championship game. The American League season is done for the loser. Home to the heart. A one, two. Two and two. Decks him. Ball rolls back to Hassler. And Hassler throws him out. The pitch was high and tight. Edwards pulling out of the way of it. The ball hit the bat. Roll back to the pitcher. You've got two out. Looked to me like the ball was going to hit him if it didn't hit the bat. No, he started his swing just a little bit inside. Now, Don Money. As you see the finish of the play. To retire Edwards in the second out. Money quiet today. But always dangerous. I think he'll have some good uh, good swings in this situation.
inside. Two balls and no strike. Uh, two balls and one strike to Don Money. Uh, make it one and one to Don Money. Boy, there are two nervous men right there. High ball, center field. Fred Lynn makes the catch. Andy Hessler does his job. He gets Milwaukee in order. So the Angels have one turn left in the top of the ninth inning, trailing four to three. Back after this message and a word from our local station. We know that Ron Jackson is going to come up and hit for Tim Foley. Ron Jackson hits with some power. Bob Boone is scheduled behind him. And you can see against Ron, uh, uh, Bob McClure, Ron Jackson has done very well. It's his first appearance in the 1982 championship series. He hit very well during the time that he was used in the regular season. You've got a good ball club when uh, you can have a Ron Jackson come off the bench late. McClure now trying to slam the door on California here in the top of the night and win the ball game. That is Audrey Keene, the manager of uh, manager Harvey Keene's wife, and Jody McClure, and immediately Ron Jackson on the first pitch drills it to center field. And so here at the top of the ninth inning, the Angels have the tying run on first base. Bob Boone will hit as Ted Simmons goes to the mound and Harvey Keene comes out of the dugout. And that could be it for Bob McClure. Caldwell, Mike Caldwell has been in the pen. Peter Ladd has been in the bullpen. Bob Boone is standing at the plate holding a bat. It would, I would think, be Ladd because he's been impressive in two appearances in this series. And it's also a bunt situation. Uh, Boone, who had 23 sacrifices during the season, it's a little bit harder to bunt off a high ball pitcher uh, in a bunting situation you want to throw the ball up in the strike zone hoping that you can get the pop fly and uh, keep the runner from advancing. So we've had the call for the new pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers and it looks like they're going to take this one to the very last out. Coming up next except on the West Coast with this believe it or not those of you in the West see it following tonight's National League Championship game coming in in relief for Milwaukee. The third Brewer pitcher, Peter Ladd, making his third appearance in the series. They call him Bigfoot. He wears a size 15 shoe. He stands big, square, and he, as we have already seen, can be very tough. Well, he's got an excellent fastball, a good hard slider that he showed on uh, on Friday. He struck out the side in his first appearance, even though it uh, was a non-pressure situation. Uh, then in a pressure situation in the 5-3 to three win, Got him out when he had to and also has a kind of a blooper pitch. Ron Jackson hitting for Tim Foley. Drilled a single on the first pitch getting McClure out of the game. Jackson now is taken off the bases and going in to run for him is Rob Wilfong. More speed. Bobby it up. First base coach talking to him. Rob going to loosen up a little bit. Run down the right field line. Preston Gomez third base coach waiting hoping to wave somebody around in that corner for California. Peter Ladd coming in now. Bob Boone is scheduled to come up with Brian Downing to follow. Nobody out. And Booney is going to come up. Ron Jackson came to the plate and popped single to center. Nick Kelleher would be the man probably to go to shortstop. If we have to go farther than the top of the ninth inning, Milwaukee is leading in the ball game four to three, a crowd of 54,968 watching today. The series has drawn 248,691, and that is a record, an all-time record for either championship series. Amazing. And base baseball fans are wonderful. All right, with Bill Fong on first base, and we'll show you that. Because that's what we think he's going to do right here. Just get that tying run down to second base. Square 
Rogers puts it down. Ladd feels it. Underhand. First base, and they get the out as Will Fong goes to second. Sacrifice for Boone, and Bob made it look so easy. He went after the one sure. I thought he might have had a play at second base, Jim. And here you see Bobby squares around at the last moment. He gets the bat out in front of the ball, and that's what you have to do in the bunt situation. You don't want to get the bat behind home plate because then the ball has a tendency to, to bounce off the plate. Just get it out and be nice and relaxed. And as Keith told you, 23 sacrifices on the year. A very adept punter. Excellent fight. Brian Downey. This big, thick neck youngster out on the mound trying to get him. The tying run, Rob Wilfong at second base. Top of the ninth inning. And Peter Ladd is high inside for ball one to Downey. The baseballs are flying around in both bullpens. Outside corner, one and one. Well, you can forget about hitting that pitch because that pitch is unhittable. If he can make similar pitches, Downing's going to have a tough job getting a, a runner in from second base. Should he get this man out, there'll be a big decision to make. Whether to let... Uh, can stay in and pitch to Carew. I think they have Cardwell loose in the bullpen. And it's all up to Harvey King. Will Fong off second. 1-1 one, one to Downing. Foul at the plate. One and two. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that... Oh, the Earl Weaver's as nervous as anybody <laughs> at the ballpark. Relax, Skipper. They used to tell me that in the dugout, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a great ball game. It's been a great series. Well, this is what baseball's all about. There's so many times during the season where you rely on your short man like Peter Ladd to come in and do the job, and you have to wait and see if he does it. The third baseman, Molitor. His throw is on the money. Two down. Neither one of these teams ever participated in the World Series. The winner of this one will. And the Milwaukee Brewers are just one out away. And that one out is named Rod Carew. Well, here's a man that's hit over 314 years in a row. And we've always said on the bench that it seems like he can get a hit anytime he wants to. And they're going to let Peter Ladd pitch to him. Well, that's why I retired, to get away from those type of decisions. The Rue hitting left-handed against the right-hander lad. The tying run edging off second base and Rob will fall. Fouled away. Strike one. What a man to have to pitch to. Gene Autry. Reflecting a passive attitude externally. This is normally when Rodney hits the ground ball up the middle. Just a nice three or four hopper. Ball one. Just missed. When you turn around, you wonder why it couldn't have been hit at somebody. One foul down the right side. It's one and two. They need one out to go to the World Series. One pitch. Gene Mock. He couldn't have a better man up than Rodney Cruz. I think I'd take Freddie Lynn. Way more. <laughs> You're right again in this series. <laughs> One, two. The shortstop, Yount. Milwaukee has won it.
The players may not survive the crush as the crowd is overrunning the field. The ball players will have to fight their way to the clubhouse. As the Milwaukee baseball fans who have not had this kind of a day since the Milwaukee Braves played here back in the 60s. And my wife is in the booth with Bud Selig, and I'm really glad that Milwaukee won because Bud, uh, I know, is as nervous as anybody in the world. The Brewers still have not been able to reach the dugout. Struggling through this enormous outpouring of appreciative fans who have come swarming onto the field. But the Milwaukee Brewers have won their first American League pennant, defeating the California Angels in the final game of the championship series 4 to 3. McClure will win it, Ladd will get the save, and Luis Sanchez will take the loss. The line score in the ball game. And tonight at 8 o'clock here on ABC, we invite you to join Al Michaels, Howard Cassell, and Tom Lasorda, the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, as they bring you Game 3 of the National League Championship Series. It's Ted Simmons on the right, Moose Haas on the left. Tired, Sal Bando. But I think the story of this franchise, as much as anything, is reflected in the number of people out on the field. It's not an angry crowd. It's not really an unruly crowd. We did have an instance, a couple of instances of fan interference. But uh, they've been a very generous and well-behaved baseball crowd. Now. Let's go to Bob Euchre, the voice of the Milwaukee Brewers on radio and standing with Cecil Cooper in the clubhouse. Bobby? Well, here's the man of the hour right now. His dramatic two-out, two-run single providing the winning margin as the Brewers came from behind today. And Cooper, uh, I know you've had some big days, Cecil, but never any bigger than this. No, Bobby, this is the biggest. Uh, they shut us out in the middle of our lineup uh, pretty much the entire series, but uh, today we, we managed to scrape for four runs and come out on top and this is it well we talked earlier Coop too about the fact that the Brewers had come off such a such a tough series uh, that Baltimore Boston series then going into Anaheim and losing two, and today becoming for the first time the first club in American League's championship series history to come two games behind and win it all it's great Bobby I tell you we uh, had our backs to the wall over in Baltimore and we came back and won that final game and then we go to California and they shut us down for two ball games but we came back and we battled back Good, nice going. Where's Harvey Keene? Here he is, right here. What's that, Bobby? Harvey Keene, the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers, and Harvey, uh, words can't explain your feelings right now. You've overcome so much adversity, uh, health problems, but it's all worth it, I guess, right now. It certainly is, Bobby. The greatest day of my life, just the greatest. I can't explain any better than that. These guys just did one super job. They fought back as they did all year, and they did it again today. Arv, uh, the victory uh, coming against your former manager, as a matter of fact, the last manager that you played for in the major leagues, Gene Mock. He came close in 1964. He comes close again here in 1982, but you won it. Yes, we did, and of course, Gene's an outstanding manager. He's a great baseball man, and, uh, and I can't uh, express some more words for Gene. I feel sorry for him, but I'm just happier than hell for this whole bunch of guys. Harvey, this was such a tough-fought series, uh, both ball clubs. Uh, we had talked earlier in the series about it possibly being a very high-scoring series, but with the exception of games one and four, it really didn't turn out that way. No, it didn't. It was really a, a pitcher series, so to speak, Bob, and uh, we got outstanding pitching today. Vuk pitched just an outstanding game, and uh, Bobby McClure came in, got a double play ball, and then came back out and pitched great, and Peter Ladd, an uh, unsung hero, but, boy, he certainly is some big man in this town tonight. Harvey Peter Ladd talking about him. Here's a man that was a late season acquisition by your club uh, coming from Houston to Vancouver and then here in Milwaukee. And he was a very key factor not only today but in this series. Well yes he was. He pitched outstanding in this series Bob. We, we got him. They said he could pitch. He was a great relief pitcher and he certainly has proven that. That's our report as of right now from the Happy Brewer Clubhouse. We'll be coming right back here. Now let's go over to Ted Dawson in the Angels Clubhouse. 
Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, I'm here with Fred Lynn. Fred, I know it's not much consolation to you, but you have been named the most valuable player of the series. You're right. <laughs> it's not much consolation. Uh, we had to get these guys early. Uh, we let them off the ropes, and uh, they're too good a ball club uh, for us to do that. Freddie, how did a club come to win three straight games off of you? Looking back over the games, was it just good hitting? Was it mistakes? What? Well, we let them uh, have a couple innings where they didn't have to earn their runs, really. Uh, they had two big innings against us in the, uh, for each of the first two games here. Uh, and they took advantage of every mistake that we made. Um, I don't think they hit like the Brewer team that they were during the season, but uh, they got timely hits. Freddie, congratulations on you individually. I'm sorry for the Angels as a team, but congratulations to you. Now let's go back to Bob Euchre and the man who did such an outstanding job in saving several ball games in this series. Bob? All right, Ted, thank you very much. And again, one of the men of the hour here in Milwaukee, a very, very happy Peter Ladd. And Peter, uh, I've got to ask you this. Uh, when you first arrived in the first few games you pitched in, uh, you pitched in some heavy pressure and gave up some big home runs, and the heat was on you in this series. Definitely, but I put all that behind because <clears throat> in the uh, playoffs, you have to have everything going for you. You can't think about the past. That's what I did. I blocked everything out of my mind, said, I want the ball, and let me pitch. In that first game at Anaheim, Pete, coming into the seventh inning, you struck out three. Uh, it didn't look like an easy task, but it turned into that for you. I'm just grateful that I got an opportunity to pitch in that game. I got my feet wet, and I was ready from there on. And the series here in Milwaukee? This is tremendous. <laughs> I'm out of breath, but I'll tell you, nobody said that we could come back and win three in a row. It's never been done before. Well, we just proved it, and we're going to bring a championship home here in Milwaukee. That's it from the clubhouse. Back upstairs to Keith Jackson. All right, Bob, thank you. Stand by. Don't get too wet with all that champagne flowing. We'll be coming down to see you again in a few moments. Remember tonight, National League Championship Series, Game 3 from Atlanta. The St. Louis Cardinals leading the Atlanta Braves two games to none. They are celebrating in Milwaukee, and we'll be right back. The crowd remains in celebration on the field at County Stadium in Milwaukee after the Brewers have defeated the California Angels 4-3 for the 1982 American League pennant. It is a happy clubhouse. And let's go back to Bob Euchre. All right, Keith, thank you very much. And uh, here are two key... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> here are two key members of this Brewer Ball Club, uh, Keith Robin Yount, the shortstop. And uh, although he won't admit it, one of the leading candidates for the MVP award. And on the other side, Paul Monitor making a first-year switch to third base. And Paulie, uh, although a lot of criticism early in the year, and you know it very well about your play at third base, it's turned into a very wonderful situation for you in this club. There's no doubt about it. It's just, uh, you, today's victory is just so... Uh, emblematic, whatever you want to say, of our entire season uh, with our backs to the wall. We're able to bounce back one more time and show the character that this ball club has. We just got to humble, humble ourselves and be thankful for everything that we have and just take it right into the series. Polly, uh, as we talk, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll talk about Robin Yount here because as of right now, they are showing a picture of uh, <laughs> the uh, lovely young Michelle Yount. And Robin, uh, of course, I know for your wife and your family, uh, it's a very happy day for you. Uh, it's hard to imagine, Robin, uh, you, the so-called veteran of this ball club at 27 in your ninth year in the Major League. Well, I feel like I'm hardly the veteran on this team. We've got a lot of guys that, that are, are uh, bona fide veterans that have been doing it uh, year in and year out just with uh, uh, very solid years. And I, I think uh, we look to those guys for leadership as Simmons, uh, Sutton, uh, Vukovic, those type guys. So uh, I don't really consider myself a leader. Robin, uh, let's talk about that final game in Baltimore and the pressure uh, comparing the two games in Baltimore and today. Well, they were uh, <laughs> as equal as of uh, pressure-filled games as I think you could uh, imagine. They were <laughs> right down to the last out. I mean, your heart's just going a million miles an hour, and uh, we just thank God that, that everything went our way. Robin, what about Bruce Keeson today? Uh, he got the victory in Game 2 in California, beating Pete Bukovic uh, by a score of 4-2. Let's talk about him today and his stuff today. Well, he pitched pretty good again, you know. We didn't get a whole lot of hits off him. We didn't score that many runs, but uh, uh, Vuki was, was himself again. He gives up a lot of hits, but he doesn't give up runs, and uh, that's a sign of a, a real competitor, and, and I, I think they both, both pitched great games, and, uh, you know, it was just a great win for us. Robin uh, trailing two games to nothing, coming back here to Milwaukee, and uh, that whole series on the road, and I guess especially in Baltimore because the crowds were huge, the hollering loud, uh, but coming back here to County Stadium, it was 
the same, only for the Brewers. It was definitely the same. These people were absolutely crazy out there today, the, the last three days. They were so loud, you, you couldn't even hear yourself think. It was unbelievable. And uh, it sure is nice when they're cheering for you and, and, and not uh, against us. Robin, let's talk about the World Series. The Brewers, uh, for the first time ever uh, in a World Series, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves will play tonight, and a Cardinal victory would be a sweep for St. Louis. Uh, any preference as far as yourself goes? I don't have any preference. I'll tell you, I'm so happy to be there. It's unbelievable, and uh, uh, we haven't played really either one of the teams. I won we had one brief game with Atlanta, and uh, we don't know a whole lot about either one, so um, we're just going to go there and, and play the hardball that we can and, and uh, uh, see what happens then all right uh, that's uh, Robin Yao down here a very very happy Brewer clubhouse as you can well imagine now let's go back upstairs to Keith Jackson we'll be back with more all right Bob I think you saw a moment ago where they they moved the crowd back away from the Milwaukee dugout made a little room and many of the team members came out and acknowledged the cheers of the crowd and there was really no great effort to get into them to be unruly about it there aren't very many places I think you could see that take place the line score in the ball game Milwaukee getting the two big runs at the bottom of the seventh inning on a single by Cecil Cooper whose bat had been very quiet and uh, they made it stand up as McClure came in and then uh, Peter Ladd finally shut the door with McClure getting the win Sanchez the loss Ladd the save and the home run in the ball game came from the bat of Ben Ogilvy whose bat had also been very quiet it all right Ben Ogilvy is now with Bob Uger so let's return to the clubhouse all right Keith thank you very much and here he is Ben Ogilvy and uh, Benji uh, not an opportunity to play in yesterday's game you were injured in game one here uh, on that catch or trying to make the catch and the ball hit by Lynn in the left field corner suffered badly bruised ribs and uh, from all indications today you were still hurting and hurting badly but uh, I guess that's all forgotten now. Well it's all forgotten you I think the important thing is that we won. I got an opportunity to get a home run a key hit bring us back in the ball game and you know give uh, Cecil the opportunity uh, to uh, come back and eventually win the game. Benji, let me ask you a question. I know you're hurting. Your ribs are hurting you badly. Uh, it may have bothered your fielding also. The pitch you hit for a home run appeared to be an off-speed pitch, and uh, with the ribs hurting the way they were, was it easier to handle an off-speed pitch or something hard? Without a doubt. You know, I got a fastball the first pitch, and I said, well, I'm going to look for a change up here, and um, geez, here it comes. <laughs> and I took, the, I took all the chance, all the opportunity in the world, and I, you know, took advantage of it. Ben, congratulations. Uh, big year for the Brewers. Their first time ever in a World Series, and uh, I guess your face tells everything. I don't have well, to ask anymore. It's a great anymore. ball club, and it's good to be a part of it. Ben Ogilvy and Pete Vukovic is right here. Pete, come on up here. Pete Vukovic, today's starting pitcher, working on three days rest, and going again against Bruce Keeson as he did in the second game in Anaheim. And Pete, uh, today things turned out a little bit differently. Uh, working with three days rest and I had asked you before the game how many times you had worked with three days rest. Uh, I don't recall having done it this year <laughs> at all Bob. Uh, Archie asked me if I could take the ball and go get him. I said yeah I'd be glad to and uh, I was confident. I knew we were playing a great ball club which we really were and and uh, they certainly didn't give in at all. I mean they kept coming at us all day long and fortunately enough with all the base runners I had on we had some great defensive plays Charlie throwing out Reggie at third base. Uh, we stayed close enough where we could snatch it late in the game and uh, everyone did a super job today. I mean it was really hard fought. Bruce Keeson threw the ball well again. He's so crafty this time of year and uh, I'm just thankful we came out on top. I've always found playing with a great ball club and I think we proved it today. Pete there's a game going to uh, get underway very shortly in about three minutes down in Atlanta. St. Louis Cardinals against the Atlanta Braves. Yeah I'll be watching that one if I get a chance to get on a monitor and check it out see what's <laughs> going on. Uh, just I'm just thankful to be there. A lot of people have asked the question you're looking forward to playing St. Louis or what have you. I really don't give a darn to be honest with you. I just wanted to be there and now I'm the happiest person in the world. We're there and that's what it's all about. That game's coming up in about 15 minutes I should say. Pete let me a I mean uh, yeah let me ask you a question about Reggie Jackson. I've got to ask you this uh, pressure situation pressure game. He's been called Mr. October. He has responded each and every year and league championship series play World Series play. What was on your mind today facing Reggie. 
I was just trying to go at his weakness, to be honest with you, try to show him some things here and there and get to his weakness, which I really haven't done in the past against him. I haven't made any pitches at his weaknesses. And uh, I made one key pitch today on him he struck out on, which was a ball, but uh, he fished and he swung and missed it. But um, all the accolades he's had in the past is definitely earned. He is Mr. October. He's a great tribute to baseball. He's on top of that, he's a Pennsylvania guy, too, like myself, which I'm a little partial to him. But uh, you got to block those things out and just go at them. Throw the ball, do what you get paid to do, make your pitches and try to get out of jams. That was Thank that. you, Pete. I appreciate it. You, Bob, now let's go back over to the California Angels Clubhouse and Ted Dawson with Bobby Gritch. Thank you very much, Bob. Bobby Gritch involved in one of the key plays in this ballgame in the seventh inning. Charlie Moore hits a little blooper to the infield. Describe in your own words what happened. Well, the ball uh, jammed him, hitting him in on his hands. As an, as an infielder, you can't really uh, tell how hard the ball is hit, you know, right away. So you have to uh, hesitate just momentarily until you see the, the depth of the, of the distance of the ball. And I could see that it was jammed, so I tried to react as quickly as I could. And I went as hard as I could towards the ball, and I, I looked out of the corner of my eye, and I could see Carew wasn't going to quite get there, and I knew nobody else was, so I had to just go as hard as I possibly could. And I dove uh, full length. And in fact, I'm not even sure if I caught the ball or not. I, I wasn't positive because I was out so far that my head had to go down. I couldn't keep my chin up because I was reaching out as far as I possibly could. The, the first, play, uh, first base umpire said you caught it. The third and home plate umpire said no. You don't know. No, I, I came up with the ball and I looked in my glove. It's the first place to check, right? So I checked my glove. The ball was there. And I looked around. And the first umpire I picked up was the first base umpire. And he was calling out, so I, I raised the glove up, you know, uh, happy that I caught the ball. And then as I turned back around, I saw the home plate umpire, you know, signaling no catch. And like I say, because of the fact I was out so far, I couldn't even tell. Bobby, were you guys nervous coming into this final ball game? No, no, not at all. We weren't nervous. We've got a ball club of uh, veteran players. We were ready to play. We weren't nervous at all. Uh, we were, uh, you know, just looking forward to the challenge, looking forward to the ball game. We knew it was going to be an exciting game. Uh, came up a little bit short, but nerves had nothing to do with it. We just came out and, and played the best ball we possibly could. Bobby Gritch, you've been playing excellent ball all season long. Congratulations on a fine year. Look forward to seeing you next year. All right. Well, I'm just glad to be a part of baseball in America. Thank Bobby you. Gritch, a reminder that we'll have, of course, the big Atlanta-St. Louis game coming up right here on ABC in about 15 minutes. But right now, let's go back to Bob Euchre in the Brewers dressing room. Uh, all right, Ted, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, Moose Haas on my right, the man who pitched the key game yesterday. And uh, Moose, I've got to ask you, you had been put in the bullpen, uh, surprised yesterday at the start or not? Well, I was surprised when Harvey came and told me uh, uh, the second game in California after the loss. He came right to me and he said, Moose, you're the pitcher Saturday uh, for game four. And uh, it kind of surprised me to name because we were going with Medich the whole time in September. And uh, but that just goes to show uh, the confidence that Harvey did have in me. No matter how many times they talk about it, being no tomorrows, there was no tomorrow for your club uh, had they lost yesterday. And uh, what was on your mind yesterday going against California? Well, the only thing that was on my mind is I knew we had to win. And, uh, you know, I didn't feel any kind of added pressure or anything like that. I just I was just hoping the weather would hold off and uh, we, uh, we didn't get too many delays. But uh, as it did, we had some delays. And the only thing I was going to do is go out and, and try 100 percent and do the best I could. And uh, luckily, I prevailed. All right, and here's the man today who was put in the game late defensively for the injured Gorman Thomas and who made the big catch on the drive by Don Baylor, Marshall Edwards, and he's done it on numerous occasions this year. Marshall, uh, I don't have to ask you how you're feeling. Your smile always tells everything, but uh, what about the ball Baylor hit? It was hit well, and you had to go up against the wall to catch it. Right, I thought the ball was hit well. Uh, I know Don has a lot of power, and I try to put myself in a position where if it did come down in the ballpark, I will be, be there to catch the ball, and just so happened the Lord put me there, and I'd like to thank the Lord for giving me a chance to know him, and it just seems the thing to work out, and just a lot of hard work, repetitious from the coaching that we had. Uh, I go out to each and every day, and they work with us real hard, and just so happened everything fell in place the way, exactly the way they said it was going to happen. Al, he's one of the happiest guys, and of course, a utility outfielder, but right now we'll go back up to Keith Jackson. All right, Bob, we'll be back down to join you in a few moments. Ripley's, believe it or not, will not be seen tonight on the East Coast. As you see, the line score from the ball game today, the National League Championship Series will begin in a few minutes down in Atlanta with the St. Louis Cardinals leading the Atlanta Braves two games to none. So the Braves are backed up to the brink themselves tonight. We'll be back with more from County Stadium in Milwaukee after this word from our local station.
We're back here in Milwaukee as the celebration continues as the Brewers have won the pennant but Fred Lynn is named the most valuable player from the American League Championship Series and he is the first ever to win the award on a losing team. He was 11 of 18 at the plate and knocked in five runs. I can say one thing that uh, whoever comes out of the National League to represent that league in the World Series they're going to be facing a pretty good baseball team in these Milwaukee Brewers and it would not really have mattered which of these two two teams had won today it was going to be a pretty good baseball team so the Milwaukee Brewers are the American League champions and right now let's switch to Atlanta for this comment from Al Michaels. All right, Keith, and what would a report of the National League Championship Series be without first a weather report? It has been quite gloomy here in Atlanta. We had cloud cover. Right now it's dark, and they do expect perhaps some rain, but right now it is dry. Both teams able to take batting practice and infield. Right now the pregame festivities going on as Atlanta hosts its first postseason competition since 1969 and the Braves with a most formidable task at hand down two games to nothing as Atlanta Fulton County Stadium fills up they'll have 50,000 plus here tonight there's the matchup Joaquin Andujar who pitched very well in the rain aborted game game one on Wednesday at Bush Stadium goes to the mound tonight and he has had three days rest and Rick Camp who started the season in the Atlanta bullpen and then was moved into the starting rotation he has pitched better than that would indicate Camp with a mark of 11 and 13 and so the Braves need a win to stay alive and the Cardinals with a victory will get set to face the Milwaukee Brewers in game one of the World Series on Tuesday. Right now let's go back to Milwaukee into the dressing room and Bob Uecker. All right Al thank you very much from Atlanta Georgia and now the general manager of the Milwaukee Brewers Harry Dalton. Uh, a man who has been very instrumental over the last couple of weeks first with the acquisition of this man right here Harry who pitched the winning game in Baltimore and then came back to win the opener here we're talking about Don Sutton absolutely uh, Don came late but when he came he had the force of somebody who had been with us all season long the impact on the ball club Don, uh, I've got to ask you this when you when you joined this Brewer ball club uh, I know you were happy about the fact that you were coming here and uh, thinking that Raleigh fingers you talked about pitching six seven innings eight innings you didn't want to go the distance anymore they said they had fingers there and they could hit with a lot of power but that didn't turn out that way well 50 percent of it was right <laughs> that's all right Bob I thought for watching from a distance that this club was going to win it all and I thought they were going to win it whether they made any acquisitions or not so for Harry to show the faith in me and to give up some prospects to get me to come over here and the treatment I got from the ball club the first day and uh, the treatment from the city and uh, just the things that have been said and the feeling that I get here and uh, I think I've heard we believe in you more in the last six weeks than I had the rest of my career and I think that any any professional athlete looks looks for that and I the whole past year has just been a, a year of miracles and I think the last six weeks just tops it all and I, I appreciate Harry and Bud and everybody going to bat for me. Don uh, the two clubs that are battling right now for the National League Championship the Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves on one with plenty of speed the other with plenty of power uh, do you have a preference as to who wins it well maybe I will tomorrow or maybe I will the next day but Bob I, it's been a long time since I've been in a clubhouse this happy and I just want to enjoy it for a while but I'm sure that in the next 48 hours we'll get together and decide what we're going to do but uh, to, to make so many comebacks uh, I think we're just going to enjoy it for a few minutes. All right, Don Sutton, and here's a guy that uh, played so well this year in right field for Milwaukee. He was a catcher. He asked for a chance to play in right field this spring. Asked this man right here, Harry Dalton, Charlie Moore with 13 assists and another big throw today. Charlie nailing Jackson at third. Uh, thank you, Bob. It's uh, it's just a great thrill to even be here because you know just past winter I did ask to be traded and I'm glad that uh, Harry Dalton was ha uh, hard headed <laughs> enough not to trade me <laughs> and uh, gave me a chance to earn a job in right field and I'm just happy to be a part of all this. All right that's Charlie Moore now let's go back to Ted Dawson in the California clubhouse. Thank you Bob Euchre. Gene Mock the manager of the California Angels. Uh, your comment on the play of the Milwaukee Brewers Gene. Well they were tenacious as they always are. Uh, they uh, got uh, effective pitching from a man that without his best stuff I thought uh, Vukovic was very good uh, considering the fact that uh, he had absolutely nothing but he knew it he knew it he knew he was out there on the shorts and he did uh, a good job with what he had I thought we'd score more runs than we did earlier in the game 
but uh, he managed to shut us down uh, to a certain extent. Gene, what did you feel was the most important play of this ball game, other than, of course, uh, Cooper's two-out single? Well, the play that uh, really hacked my Achilles tendon was the base on balls to Yount. If Yount gets a base hit and ties the ball game, then Andy will come on in and uh, Hassler will come on in and face uh, Cooper. But with the base on balls, it narrows, it narrows us down to, to uh, a must situation as far as strikes are concerned. And uh, the pitcher that was out there was throwing strikes. And as good as Cooper is, he doesn't have to get a hit. Gene, did. congratulations on an excellent season. Thank you for the excitement of the season. Best of luck to you in years to come. Well, it's been a big disappointment, uh, not for me necessarily, but uh, to see these guys go unrewarded for how hard and how intelligently they played, uh, that hurts. Gene Mock, let's go back up to Keith Jackson. All right, Ted, thanks very much. Good job in the locker room, both you and Bob Euchre. And now a closing comment from Earl Weaver and Jim Palmer. Well, I think one of the big plays was Charlie Moore's throw, and it kept them out of a big inning. They won the game by one run, and it was an exciting ball game, and I certainly, for one, was happy to be able to be here and see it. Jimmy? I was just happy to be here, too, and uh, I'm not sure if the better club won, but uh, Milwaukee certainly earned it. They did come back, and uh, gutty for pitching performance by Vukovic. Gene Mock said it bets didn't have much, but he hung in there, and uh, Cooper... I think he's probably the toughest out in the American League, and when he needed to get a hit, he did. And a tradition is underway at the parking lots around County Stadium. Something started a long time ago, and with George Bamberger was the manager here, and uh, it's growing, and there will be a party in Milwaukee tonight, indoors and outdoors, as you reflect back on the final lap, as young Peter Ladd comes on in relief and gets the save as the Milwaukee Brewers beat the California Angels for the 1982 American League pennant, 4-3. And now we invite you to stay tuned as we'll be going on down to Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium where the Braves try to stay alive in their best of five series with the St. Louis Cardinals. The Braves are down in that series two games to none. The Redbirds win it tonight and they will be the opponent in the World Series against the Milwaukee Brewers. Milwaukee's first trip ever to the World Series. So it was quite a week with these California Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers and it's been fun to be part of it. The National League Championship Series will be on the air here on ABC in just a few moments at 8 Eastern Time, 7 Central, and at 5 o'clock Pacific Time, coming out of Atlanta, Georgia. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the 1982 American League Championship Series produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Ken Fouts, our technical director Mike Blazo, associate director Paul Hutchison. The 1982 American League Championship Series has been brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to take charge of a new Chevrolet car or truck at your Chevrolet dealers now. Tomorrow on ABC World News Tonight, we'll feature a report on the practice of using stray animals as specimens for laboratory research. So we invite you to watch ABC World News Tonight tomorrow. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. Well, this is Keith Jackson for Earl Weaver, for Jim Palmer, for Bob Euchre, for Ted Dawson, and for all of you who enjoyed baseball in 1982, and who enjoyed our coverage here on ABC, as the Milwaukee Brewers win the American League pennant for the very first time. They did it after being down to the California Angels two games to none. They came home and won three in a row. And now the Atlanta Braves, perhaps buoyed by the fact that if Milwaukee could do it, maybe so can we. Because the Atlanta Braves were defeated successively in St. Louis, a series that was rained out twice at Bush Stadium. The Atlanta Braves and the Cardinals coming up at 8. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Good night. From a happy Milwaukee.